Hey, what's up? Welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 3, Episode 5. We're talking The Boneyard from 1991, directed by James Cummins. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor. It's pronounced Boneyard McGraw. Welcome to The Dumpster. Okay, question. If these, if these things are, are so feared, so powerful, why do they require mere mortals to protect them? They do not. It has been my family's responsibility, curse, to see that mankind is protected from them. You see, if they are not fed, they will feed. But the bodies they found were dead, Mr. Chen. They, they weren't any threat to anybody. They are Kyoshi. The undead. When they are full, they can play possum very well. <laughs> very well indeed. <laughs> You know, like a vineyard. Yes. <laughs> oh, like the vineyard with with uh, with low pan. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, like a, why isn't it called a wine yard then? I I don't I don't know. Because <laughs> it's a vine yard. It's a vineyard. Whatever. Are you implying, Connor, that there's just a yard with a bunch of trees in there with bones hanging from them? I mean, what the fuck is a bone yard? I mean. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's ask The Undertaker, because he's apparently wrestling AJ Styles in one uh, this coming weekend at WrestleMania. So, you know what? We'll be able to see what a boneyard actually is, and not a metaphorical one. Now, my real question is, is, is there going to be a crowd at WrestleMania? No. What the fuck are they doing? They're doing a show. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. They were doing a show at the Performance Center with no crowd, which is going to be the most awkward thing ever, because what is WrestleMania? It's all spectacle. And without... The, sh- the stage and the audience, you've got no spectacle. Is it all just close-ups? Yeah, we, it will, I mean, like, it's a smaller arena. Yeah. So, like, yeah, it's gonna, like, the lights are lower, and, like, there's, it can fit, like, 400, 500 people. Um, but with- I already know the answer to this question, but I'm gonna pose it anyway. Alright. Is Vince McMahon doing COVID-19 tests on his fucking <laughs> athletes after these matches? I don't think so. No, because he doesn't, he doesn't believe it's a real thing, and doesn't <laughs> oh believe in illness, God. weakness, sickness, or disease, and is only, and only believes in the strength of the, you know, of, of man or some shit. Vince McMahon's a fucking disease. Yeah, yeah. And this isn't from me. This is from Jim Cornette. You can listen to him talk about it. But um, the uh, the mayor of the city where the performance center is is also saying now that no one's allowed to leave their house. I think like past this oh. Thursday. So now, like now, the show may not even happen. So. <laughs> Um, uh, Dave Aon posted on, uh, my, my buddy Dave Aon posted on, uh, Julie's timeline, a video of a match with nobody there. And it was like, yeah, it was like avant-garde theater or some shit. Like, oh yeah, that's it's, what they're calling like, it. Like, I thought that was like, hilarious. It's wrestling at like the most purest form you can, you can possibly have <laughs> just in front of nobody practicing because if it's, because if it comes off as that good, that means it's perfect. And you didn't have, need an audience to do it. But yeah. if it sucks, guess what? You need it. Chris Jericho could never do that because he calls his spot so loud. You would just be <laughs> hearing it echoing off the fucking ceiling constantly lion salt but like also like you need the morale from the crowd for it to work right yeah like yeah. what like what's gonna happen is taker gonna drop to one knee like roll his thumb across his throat to dead fucking silence no pun intended yeah um like what's gonna happen like like was is gonna come out to like you know with his big old smoking jacket to just nobody get it it's the boneyard it's quiet yeah because there's nobody there because everybody's dead and here's the thing. The Boneyard match is definitely going to be something shot on location in a totally different style. Um, and it's directly, my theory, is it's directly to avoid to ha- of to having The Undertaker come out to no crowd. Because that would be the weirdest, most awkward thing I've ever yeah. seen in a wrestling ring. <laughs> then why are they bothering doing it, you know? Because because Vince doesn't want to cancel the fucking event. That's um, and that's basically what it comes down to. What an that's asshole. All it is. Like, he doesn't have enough fucking money, right? Yeah. Um... But now we could talk about the movie The Boneyard. Yeah. Now that we've talked about wrestling. Hi, Ray. That was your WrestleMania <laughs> podcast that we're uh, pitching. This was actually the a update ba- I didn't <laughs> know I needed. This was a backdoor pilot surprise. Uh, the, the pilot and the last episode, if that's the case. That's it. Wrap it up. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good, because I never, I, I, I would rather stab myself in both feet than talk about wrestling for two hours a week. So. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, pass.
Um, it's not even my thing, so put that in perspective. And it is my thing, but it's so bad, I don't want to talk about it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna we're let let's talk about the movie, The Boneyard. This yeah. fucking <laughs> this weird ass like kind of cartoony, but also kind of dead serious, and sometimes really fucking dark oh, horror yeah, movie man. that I've never heard of. Uh, you know, the thing with this is like it's one of those movies where. They weren't sure how it was going to play to people, so they're like, well, it's a horror movie. Oh, you don't like horror? It's a comedy movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, because, like, when I went... <laughs> but, like, 45 minutes in. Yeah, and, like, when I went to go look for this online, like, to get information about it, like, I saw commenting people coming, like, oh, this is my favorite dark comedy of the 1990s. I'm like, what the fuck are you on about? This isn't a dark comedy. That's not what I read from it anyway. Uh, th- dude, there's a lot of comedy in this, and the fucking writing is tack sharp, in my opinion. Oh, I... Th- th- the script is, like, the strongest thing about it for me, Um, because some of these conversations just feel so fucking real. Oh, and the effects, too, dude. Uh, I particularly like like the uh, the 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 Shep character that we'll we'll get to later on. Yeah, hip, hippie doctor. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know he had a ponytail until he turned around the first time. <laughs> He's hitting that fucking Labrador, dude. <laughs> Are we talking about hippie Mister uh, Roper? Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> hippie Roper. Yeah, he sure is. Oh my god. Yeah, Mister Roper from fucking Three's Company. Yeah. Sporting a fucking ponytail and some big ass glasses. But Joe, please, please tell me more about this film because I don't know a. F- fucking thing about this movie outside of just watching it there's here's the thing like there's not that much out there even like okay so so this is like unlucky leprechaun where i went looking for shit about it and i was like oh there's just nothing (laughs) but how is that possible right it's it's got phyllis stiller in it like how is there no information i know well here's the thing like it's not as obscure i feel like as as aberration is Right, where, right, like, aberration, there is literally nothing out there. There's no interviews, at least as far as that's to the, you know, open to the public and shit. Ah. However, <laughs> beat you to it, fuckers. <laughs> However, um, <laughs> the Blu ray um, that was put out by Kino Lorber, I believe, if I fuck that up, my bad, I can't remember. There are, there's like archival shit. Right. So there's like a Phyllis Diller interview and some other stuff. But like beyond that, there's not too much a uh, little peek behind the curtain. Like I tried to reach out to a few of these act- actors, um, specifically um, James Eusterman, who plays Gordon Mullen in this, who's also in uh, Cast a Deadly Spell with fucking Fred Ward. Whoa. Uh, which we totally need to do. Yeah. David Warner's the bad guy. Sign me up. H.P. Lovecraft shit. Sign me up. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes. Um, which is like a weird, like, magic noir movie. It's really good. Uh, we should totally dip into that at some point. Anyway. Um, yet yeah, these people are were really hard to get a hold of. And, and I did get in touch with him, but he didn't get back to me. And I couldn't find uh, the actress who plays... Um, Allie, who, uh, what's her name? Uh, Deborah Rose, I believe her name is. Yeah. Um, I reached out to her, or, or I, I couldn't reach out to her because I couldn't fucking find her. She's like in two <laughs> things ever and like not available. Hung up her hat. Yeah. She's she much like she's elusive, just just like her character in the film. Yeah. Yeah. She's a recluse, yeah. Apparently. <laughs> yes, um, yeah. Building her own tomb, supposedly. Um, where are we going with that? Oh yeah, but to but to your point, um. Aside from the special features on that on that Blu-ray, I think there's an interview with one of the ghoul children, uh, uh, the 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 female ghoul child, I believe. I, I mean, honestly, I'm surprised it's a Blu-ray. Yeah. Like, well, I, me too, and I'm glad it got it right. So this is this is one yeah. of those this is one of those films that totally. Remember, I I had I had talked before about you know like Severn and Vinegar Syndrome and stuff like releasing you know unknown films or like hard to get films or like films that are only on yeah. uh, uh tape well this had the VHS release then it was reissued on VHS and then it got a DVD release but everything's way out of print and then it got the Blu-ray uh release okay um yeah which I, a couple years ago now at this point it's just funny to think that like this got a Blu-ray but like Dog Soldiers almost didn't like <laughs> It's just a matter of accessibility, I feel like, to yeah. the materials, you know? Um, and thank goodness uh, they were able to, to get their hands on this. I don't even know where the fuck they got it from, to tell you the truth. Um, I believe the director 
has passed away. Yeah, no, Jay, you're right. 2010, he passed away. Yeah, he passed away in 2010. Wow. Oh, so, oh, wow, he's been gone for a minute. Yeah, and that was even after. So, and this Blu-ray came out after that. So that sucks. Yeah, somebody had access to the negative because they remastered it and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's great. Uh, so again, like uh, to your point, no, there's not that much about this film <laughs> out there. You know, um. People have reviewed it before, obviously, and a lot of people um, that are into horror and B-movies know about this film. Um, if you're listening and you haven't heard about it, uh, strap in because you need to get your fucking hands on it and buy that fucking Blu-ray. Yeah, yeah strap in because it's like a fucking more, it's like a, a more serious Return of the Living Dead at some points. Uh, yeah, it definitely has that charm, right? It almost feels yeah. like a Dan O'Bannon film, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. yeah, yeah. It has that. It has that kind of charm to it. Um, it it's like it, it's like a more schlubby people were in it. Like, <laughs> it, it, right? It, well, yeah. Like everybody's of. just so fucking normal. I love it. Uh, no, that's. The, I think that's the best part. Everybody's pretty relatable. Um, yeah, like nobody in this movie would qualify as an action star. Not no, a single one of them. No, like, especially <laughs> our lead heroine, dude, or an actor, or an actor. Yeah. Or an actor. <laughs> Because I, I gotta agree, the conversations are very real in this film, but the acting is fucking horrible in this movie. Some of them are, some of it's bad. The script is so good mm -hmm. at some points in this movie, like the conversational stuff is just fantastic. So mm -hmm. I'm like, everyone sucks, but it's okay. It's well, fine. Yeah, well, Ed Nelson's a fucking gift. Well, the main character is is kind of my favorite because even though I don't think she's a great actress, she uh, she sells it with her emotion. Her reactions and everything are, are really good. That and like... That and it, it should be noted the the main character Allie is like without trying to be mean at all is a very large woman. Oh, she's heavy who set. is like sunken eyed and sad and clearly just like has fucking tapped out physically mm -hmm. and mentally. Really, yeah. Who is doing some kind of awesome shit by the end of this movie in regards to like physicality? She basically has like the dead zone powers that Christopher Walken has in that movie. Yeah, she's got psychometry. Uh, which is where like you can touch something and then like see the past in its right, right in it, you know, in the history of something. Except her hers comes with horrifying implications, and apparently she can only tap into child murders. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's it. Or maybe that's just like the 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 those are like the cases she wanted to work with. Maybe I don't know. There are some there are some themes in this that not aren't overlooked in the film, but are very um, subtle. Right, because I guess they kind of go into it later in the film, like how they explain away why it's like that. This film is rich in lore and character development, but you will miss it if you're not looking for it, right? It's also rich in, like, really heavy shit. Yes. Like, despite some really slapsticky stuff that happens, like, as soon as Phyllis Dora comes in, you're like, what even is this movie? <laughs> um, it's like, it's because you're like, what are you doing here? Tonal shift, big time. Yeah. It is a tonal shift, but then, like, 20 minutes later, like, There'll be a conversation between two people, and you're like, what the fuck? That's a horrifying thing to think about. And completely captivated by it, right? Yes, so, it's fascinating. <laughs> well, that's the that's the greatness of this film. Like, it manages to... This is one of those rare cases where it balances that comedy and horror, like, pitch perfectly. Like, it yeah. is very much um, that shake and bake combination that comes to, like, a T. A it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Like the pendulum weight is perfectly balanced. Like mm -hmm. it just goes one way and then goes back the other way, the exact same way. Perfectly balanced, like all things should be. But yeah, what is? But okay, now here's my only question: What the fuck is this movie actually about? <laughs> <laughs> well, on one hand, it's a uh, suicide redemption story. Yeah. 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 And then on another hand. It's a movie about coping with child loss. Yeah. And then, on another hand, it's about Chinese folklore. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, though? And then, on another hand, it's about being a bad cop. Yeah. No, yeah, definitely that one. See, see, most of those I got, it was where we got into, like, all the fucking sorcery and shit. I was like, what are all you bibble babbling on about? I have no idea what y'all are doing, but keep doing it. I love it. That's my favorite part, and that's the main line in this fucking film. We're, we'll get into it, but, like, that's the fucking meat and potatoes of this whole thing. And then every all the other stories are kind of parallel around it. It's very well written, in my opinion. Yeah. It might not be the best acted the whole time, but it's really well put together. Yeah, no, I, I got I got lost in the weeds, so to speak, as far as, like, what was actually happening to make all this shit occur. Um, and I don't know how that happened. I was watching, and I was like, 
all right, what are you talking about? And they, then they showed me a weird flashback, and I was like, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> well, I will learn you. So let's do All it. All right. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. I thought that that was fucking cool. Yeah, man. So I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, real quick, before we get uh, started started, I totally forgot this was a Thanksgiving movie, <laughs> and we should have saved it for for Thanksgiving. I was going to say, we found one. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking that while I was watching it. Because this would have been a fucking banger. Like, nobody would have expected that. Not at all. We found one, and we fucking... I, didn't, I wouldn't say we wasted it, but misfire. I completely <laughs> forgot, and I'm, I'm watching it. I'm like, oh, yeah, duh. Because anyway. wasn't, wasn't our joke like, there's just two. We've done them all now. Yeah, great. Now we have to do fucking Thanksgiving, right? <laughs> great. <laughs> okay. Look what um, you made us do. Yeah, but realistically, we could do Thanksgiving in between a good shit. Like, it's 45 minutes long, and we'd be like, and then the turkey said, fuck. <laughs> and then I checked the fuck out, and that's the end of the episode. Yeah, and then we said, gobble, gobble, bitch, and we turned it off. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I am not looking forward to that. <laughs> uh, I also want to comment on the on the score, too, real quick. Um, the, the score is by John Lee Whitener, um, and it's really good, and it's totally... Um, I feel like it's better than it should be. Yeah. Okay, I was going to say something. The music of this movie is sometimes fucking popping off and there's nothing happening. Oh, man. It's like <laughs> it's like Home Alone meets Halloween on a Nightmare on Elm Street. That's in, yeah. in a fucking blender. That's what it feels like. I especially love the beginning where it's being applied when there's just like, I'm like, no one's talking. No one's really doing much of anything. No. The music is telling you something important <laughs> shit is happening. No sound effects, just music. Yeah. <laughs> strings yeah lots of them there are some musical cues in this that are fucking bone chilling as well as the uh visuals the horror in this film is like top notch grade a fucking spook give me the willies kind of shit yeah but uh okay so let's jump into it uh so a plot crunch there is a woman named Allie who is a uh, has psychometry, which we've previously said um, she can see the past by touching objects. And she has previously helped um, this detective, Jersey Column, solve missing child cases, right? Child uh, with, with dead children and things like that. Um, she has since retired um, and become a recluse shut in. Um, and she is called upon once again by Jersey the detective, to help solve a case about three dead children kept by this Chinese man for safekeeping, Mr. Chen. She goes and she finds out what the deal is with these things, and it turns out they're fucking Chinese demons. Or <laughs> or something. <laughs> they're ghouls. They eat people. Zombies, undead creatures. They are They are called the Kyoshi. Right. Um, yeah, they all look horrifying uh, with what little I could see on the copy I <laughs> Oh man, they are stunning in that fucking Blu-ray rip. I gotta tell. They or, look, they look really fucking cool uh, when they're really when they're lit really well too. Do yourself a favor if you like the film, get the Blu-ray. It's all cleaned up. It looks gorgeous. Yeah, and they are disgusting. By oh, the way, man, and their children in these fucking. Well, we'll get to it. <laughs> so, so, so we open. There's a lot up, of good shit. A lot of good shit in this movie. You haven't noticed, everybody. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna break it all out like a fucking sweet omelet. I don't know what the fuck I'm trying to say there, but anyway. <laughs> An omelet created by, like, a uh, caramel egg. Oh, man, like a Cadbury egg? I know people that don't like those, but they're some of my favorite candies. Yeah, but, it, yeah, yeah. We're going to break it out like like a, like a sweet omelet. Uh, like a sweet fucking Cadbury egg omelet. I, I put yams in there. I, it, it, <laughs> oh, my God, he put onions in the eggs. He's cooking our garbage. Anyway. Uncle Buck, everybody. Um, <laughs> so, so, so we open up uh, at this... Fu it looks like a fucking haunted house, for Christ's sake. Um, yeah, I, well, it's the fucking Resident Evil 7 house. Let's be it, honest. Uh, right? You took the words right out of my, my mouth. <laughs> it's the fucking Sawyer Mansion. Yeah, boy, you're about to see something wonderful. <laughs> Come into my dirty kitchen where we haven't cleaned the dishes since 1965. <laughs> Come on inside. I won't. I won't Texas chainsaw you. In <laughs> Come on in. My clothes are hanging up in the fucking kitchen. Yeah. Watch me blow my fucking head off. 
It's gonna be awesome. It'll grow right back. My wife's a spider. Um, this movie opens with lots of pantomiming, and I fucking love it. Yeah, uh, yeah we don't even get a line. Well, we get a few lines of dialogue, but it's very um. It's lots of Ali. Yeah. Are you home? What are you doing? I'm Jesse Callum. <laughs> I'm detective guy. Stay in the car. You're new. <laughs> By the way, what a fucking <laughs> cop name, Jersey Callum. Yeah, see, he's one step away from fucking meowing. And- oh, he he is. Yeah, he he looks like a retired mobster too. It's I love great. it. Well, yeah, and, and to make sure that the audience knows he's a cop, he has a tan uh, trench coat on and a fucking hat. That's it. Not a badge. God, he, I, like, what the fuck was Inspector Gadget doing at this fucking house? <laughs> like, that was my f- first fucking question. Even the other guy, even, like, his junior, that guy, uh, what's the character's name? Uh, Gordon Mullen. Gordon. Fucking Gordon, he's wearing, like, this maroon suit. I'm like, what cop wears that? <laughs> Does this does this look like a cop tie? The fucking the school of Casey Gallagher? Yeah, right. That's like, I couldn't stop thinking of that. I was referring to him as Officer Rick Astley for a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Never gonna give you up. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna give you my bed. Gonna find some lady in clothes and shoot her. These people are these cop. These people. Um, these cops are very obviously trying to get some yes. attention who lives in this creepy, beat-up house to, to no avail. So they just walk in. Sure do. They're fucking walking over fucking grilled cheese and broken plates and shit all over the floor. A broken T-virus vial. Yeah, they're stepping through the contents of the dumpster in that place. Jordy Verrill's in the corner with his fucking head's blown off. <laughs> Monster in the closets down there, House of the Dead, Dragon Ball Evolution. Allie's house is the movie dumpster. (laughs) She lives in there. She's like the protector of the movie dumpster. I don't think so, dude. You know what this is? This is the fucking wizard's castle. This is what it looks like in there. This oh, the, no. This is the fucking abode. This is the, the ascended abode. It was really easy to get to. I guess these cops are really fucking important. Yeah, man. I'm telling you. She. I think she... Well, we'll get to her in a second when she appears. She's like, she's like wizard's place. What the fuck do you want? Oh, it lo- Oh, it looks like it. Ring the bell. Oh, I fucking hit the ham sandwich. <laughs> um, so, so they're walking through this fucking dilapidated mess of shit. And... Um, <laughs> They end up going upstairs, or the or the rookie goes upstairs, uh, uh, Gordon, and he is like fumbling around in uh, Allie's room, and he goes to take a book off a shelf, and the fucking whole thing falls down, and yeah, yeah, she's like in a pile of clothes on the bed. She looks like the fucking trash heap from Fraggle Rock that talks. Yeah, yeah. There's that, or she looks she looks like Mr. Susan from the Mighty Boosh, like who's just this fucking villain made of cloth with a Windex bottle in his hand and shiny <laughs> disco <laughs> testicles, like. I I have to get a picture of that for the fucking Instagram account so everybody can oh, see man. it. Oh <laughs> man, do it. Well, she just starts pummeling this guy. She knocks his fucking gun out of his hand. She fuck it. She's deadly with that pillow, man. She's a pillow fighter. <laughs> she has beaten the fuck out of this this police officer with a down pillow. He's just like uh, he's like ah. Uh, uh. He's the worst cop. <laughs> he's fucking. She hits him with a pillow. His fucking gun goes flying. He falls down three flights of fucking stairs. Yeah, if this was Valentine, he'd have a broken neck. <laughs> He falls into the tr- a dumpster at the bottom of the stairs. Yeah, that, that bitch died from one flight of stairs. He's like, <laughs> he lands next to Pluto Nash. Oh, my God. <laughs> and he screams. He's like, ah! <laughs> Want some AOL discs? <laughs> what happened? Are you hurt? No, Pluto Nash. No, I saw Pluto Nash. I saw, you, you watched it? No, I saw the cover. That was enough. <laughs> She's got, she's like hoarding like the tapes, the Pluto Nash tapes. Oh my she, God. She hisses and reaches over and grabs it. She's using those for the fucking fire to keep warm. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. In the fire next to all her old fucking records of all her uh, cases, her cases <laughs> that she's burning that fucking Jersey finds and he's sitting there bent down, checking them out like, huh, why would she throw these away? Oh, why, how would these cause, this must, there's no way these cause some sort of trauma. <laughs> so, so Allie. Her name's Allie Oates, and she finally, you know, fucking Gordon falls down the stairs into a shit pile. You know, he fucking face plants into a goddamn, you know, bowl of old cereal or something. And <laughs> Allie comes down the stairs, and she's like, Jersey? Is that you? And he's like, Jesus fucking Christ, Allie, what the hell happened here? Looks like a fucking tornado hit this place. He's like, is that the fat guy's corpse from Seven? What do you do? What is he doing here? <laughs> What's with all the air fresheners? Did you make him eat SpaghettiOs or what? She did this woman... Has like this grimace on her face for ninety percent of the film, and she like <laughs> she shuffles over like, "Get the fuck out of my house! You don't have a search warrant." I fucking love this woman. I really do. Uh, she's got problems, right? Right out of the gate, yeah. she's got some serious problems. Well, she's depressed. Yeah. She doesn't give any fucks. She just uh, she doesn't want to be bothered. Yeah. Like like okay, this woman was very clearly sleeping under like what seems to be garbage or something, which is one of my favorite things. Like because after she's like, "Jersey, is that you?" Um. 
And then, like, she yells at uh, Mo, and she's like, she's like, you interrupted me. She's like, you interrupted me sleeping under a pile of trash. <laughs> like, He's like, were you sleeping or just getting up? Or just going to bed or some shit like that? <laughs> What's it to you? <laughs> Whatever. Listen, I got a case for you. And she's like, no, 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 no. I don't do that shit anymore. <laughs> and he's like, come on, Allie. I need your help. You helped me find those dead kids before. She's like, God damn it, Jersey. She's like, what am I supposed to do with the grief again? I can't take it anymore. That's why I told you to go fuck yourself. And he's like, oh, well, listen, Allie. I, I don't know what I do with it. I just keep doing my job because I'm a cop. It, it, you know what? When we're, now that we're reciting this, like, the dialogue is very, like, it feels like it should take place in some, like, detective office in a black and white movie. Right. Like, Guy tries to feel you up. <laughs> 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 he's back he's saying that to her she's like jersey she's like wait what what is why is it the twilight zone narrator again <laughs> words are exchanged i mean they trap us in this laundry room for a solid five oh so God, it could be the fucking twilight zone so fuck a man tries to feel you up it is tuesday <laughs> zombie children chinese curse or bullshit you be the judge. Come help me solve this case. Welcome to Twitter. Now, what is he, Robert Stack now? <laughs> I don't know. Was I drifting there? Okay. No, I did say, actually, I put in my notes, said this whole movie feels like a like a uh, an unsolved mystery sketch that just goes on and on and on. Just the way it's filmed, <laughs> the way it's acted. Like, it feels like a reenactment that just goes off the rails. <laughs> Jonathan Frakes comes in. <laughs> hey, excuse me while I step over this chair. Is this true, or am I pulling your leg? <laughs> Believe it. Well, they... they- they go back and forth a few times. Like, she basically tells him to piss off. He comes in and he makes his point. And then he goes to leave and then she stops him. And it's like a whole back and forth for like a few minutes. Yeah, it's basically. And she's kind of like 50-50 about it. She's like, ah, maybe. She just, she 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 got out of the game because she can't deal with. Um, what she sees. What she sees, yeah. She has these visions of these children and, and dead kids and stuff like that. So she has like these overwhelming uh psychic like visions and dreams on top of actually dealing with it in like real life right yeah and like this is where this is like the first instance of this movie's tone like the balance of it comes in because after all that wacky shit that just happened two people have a very relatable sounding conversation about like i don't want to do this anymore because when I do, I see things that will stay with me for the rest of my natural life and i'm gonna fucking do it anymore she's like the guy from the green mile when she touches yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah. Except she doesn't, like, pull cancer out of people. That we're aware of. Well, maybe. Yeah, we, Ali's powers are yet to be uns- uh, yet to be seen. Yeah, um, it's possible. She could be the Lorraine Warren of the MDU. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, she's a slob. She's wearing a fucking robe. She could be. She fits right in there. Yeah. She does. Yeah. Charne- Charnetsky's in the kitchen. Uh, excuse me, Jersey. Can you get the fuck out of here? I'm trying to make my hot wings. What the fuck are you doing in my kitchen, cop? <laughs> I'm... Grieving. <laughs> She's like sitting there with her fucking pictures, like looking at him stone faced. He's like, okay, geez, right. <laughs> I'm going back to my room. Fuck off. She's like, I just had to get out of bed. Fucking Gunner's in there. I had all the covers over my head and he's still walking around farting. You don't got to yell at me, Allie. It's fine. It's my house too. I can walk around naked if I please. She's like the landlord. <laughs> oh my goodness. She owns the building. She can't get rid of them because they're ethereal. Oh man. <laughs> She's like, the, she's yeah, she's like the seer of the MDU. <laughs> she's like, what's with that little elf thing? What, what, what's with that? Don't ask me questions. Oh, yeah, that that's a big gag. I love the idea that you can't evict someone because they're non-corporeal. <laughs> <laughs> Dobby hasn't been doing his job because he's hiding from Haggerty. <laughs> we keep having him kill himself and come back to life. <laughs> we keep bringing him back to life to fuck with Haggerty. <laughs> <laughs> the guy hates elves. I do miss him, though. I wish he'd clean up this fucking house. So so Jersey leaves, and right before he leaves, he's like, I just, I'm going to give you another one of my cards because I saw you burn the other one in the fucking fireplace. And he, like, <laughs> <laughs> calls her out hard. <laughs> and he sticks I, it under a fucking half-eaten pot pie and just says, well, see yeah. you later. And <laughs> just leaves. Right by her head. I yeah. noticed you burned my card. I'm not hurt, but I'm giving you another one. You burned my card. So I'm going to stick another one under your pot pie. She also, I just remembered while they're arguing, he says something trying to like get her to come back and she gets really fucking pissed off and knocks like 16 pots and pans off her fucking stove. Yeah, if the house wasn't a mess enough already. It, it's intense. Yeah, no, and yeah, I love all this. I love this entire exchange. 
Um, I also love what happens afterwards because she kind of gets like she gets like listless and uh, starts going through like a photo album of like her old cases. Yeah, she has like a big, big these big stacks of you know like those old like filing those paper foldable filing boxes. Yeah, she just has like stacks of these things full of like paperwork. So like they discuss a couple cases, but this really puts into perspective how much she's actually worked with this guy and how many cases yeah. she's actually been on because it's just fucking piles of shit. And it gives you a nice perspective as to why this woman would be in the shape she is because, like, if you think about, you know, what if what she's seeing is so traumatic and there's this much of it, like, oh, yeah, I would fucking shut out too. Yeah, she's emotionally drained. And, and every time she has to solve a case, she has to incur the pain of that person, right? Yeah, yeah. So she, like, relives their events through their their items. All right, and at the end of the day, I think Jersey's whole point is, like, I get it. Like, I can't ever understand it fully. But at the same time, like, if you were to come back, like, it would make a difference. because yeah, I have no fucking idea. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> about who these kids are or where they came from. <laughs> I'm flying by the seat of my fucking pants, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I need to close this case, and I can't fucking do it without you. I am 170 years old, all right? Let me fucking retire. <laughs> In fact, if you saw what these kids look like, you'd be scratching your fucking head, too. <laughs> they're dead, but they're full of fucking people. Oh, that's what he says, yeah. He's like, listen, Allie, these kids are zombies, but I'm not explicitly calling them zombies, but they're dead... And they're full of people parts. Like, they ate them. Oh, I missed that line. Because, the, the, yeah, he says, like, the, the kids, uh, they found the kids, and, like, they performed the autopsy, and they have Mr. Chen in, like, a interrogation cell. Oh, that is a... Oh. And, and they find human body parts inside the kids, um, and he suspects that Chen was feeding these kids that are dead now. Uh, yeah, he was... Uh, yeah, he suspected that Chen was feeding... These kids that were alive at one point, dead bodies. Wow, this movie has a whole new perspective for me now. Holy yeah, shit. Man. Yeah, that, that was is, the whole thing. Yeah, that, that is, was why. That's why he's there. We'll get into it in a minute. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, yeah, and I was like, I think maybe that line is what made me lose the plot a nah, little bit. They, they totally explain it. Okay. Well, that's the first, that's the first, um, that's the first, um, you know, that's like a hint. inkling of it, right? And you're like, oh, okay, that, that's kind of weird. Well, she, he just wants to solve a, a regular case where, you know, there's some missing kids or these dead kids and we need to know about them and what happened. That's pretty much what he's, what he says with yeah. that, ca with the caveat of, and there's dead people inside them. Right. And there's people pots inside of them. Just so I just throw that out there. And like Connor was saying earlier, she's sitting there with those photos and she kind of passes out. And then she has a vision, I guess of like one of her cases, or maybe it's implied to be her, her daughter who she lost in a miscarriage, as we find out later. Um, I I think this is just a case that just has stuck with her a lot, uh, because she ends up, she has the dream, um, and it's such a great sequence, dude. Like, uh, it's creepy as shit. It, and and again, like you know, we're goofing around, and uh, you know, a scene before we're, we're cracking jokes and shit, and then this just fucking snaps right back to yeah, serious yeah. horror drama elements um and by the way uh this film is shot really well and all of the horror sequences are fucking on point creepy as fuck oh agreed so yeah the sequence is so great because there's like this little dead girl like sitting on the ground and Allie comes out and she's just like sobbing looking at this picture and she goes over to her and she turns around and this is the first instance of the makeup that this movie flaunts and <clears throat> Man, it is good. I don't think I've ever seen um, dead bodies done the way that this film does them. That's because this movie doesn't go... They're not tiptoeing the fact that, it, like, corpses are fucking disgusting at a certain... Like, at a certain point, like, what you're looking at is just horrifying. If you're talking about, like, real, like, real human decay... And this is all very mean. Like, I would call it mean, but it's just honest. It's like there's fucking bones exposed. Like, this, like nothing's fucking red and bloody and goopy. It is no. green and discolored and gross. It is very much pale greens and slimy and bloated yes. and yes. scraggly. It Like, I know that sounds weird, but, like, you know, you watch a show like The Walking Dead, and you're like, oh, that guy's rotten. And I'm like, no. These people look like you can smell them, right? Yes. They're like yellowy and yeah, right, and they're green and they're and they're wet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's too like cuz like like the color palette of like most zombies is like browns, 
you know, a little bit of blacks or like you know, reds. That like grays maybe some blues. Stuff, yeah. yeah, grays, blues, stuff like that. But like nothing ever truly putrid looking. And this is disgusting. It, it, they look like Meg Mucklebones from Legend. Yeah, that's the yeah, best they way. Are, yeah. they all look gross. Yeah, and they like and like you said, wet. Like they look like they look. Like if you touch them, you'd have that that stream of muck that would come yeah. with your hands, like <laughs> which is fucking gross. <laughs> like so, like like with, that would leave you Peter Venkmaning all over the place, just whipping your hand like over any surface. Like you wipe it on a tree, like ah yeah. yeah. <laughs> this thing blows its nose. You want a fucking sample of it? Your mucus. <laughs> <laughs> so, th- so then the movie actually does something that's pretty cool here, where it kind of, uh, you know, it kind of tricks you. Yeah. It turns this really horrifying scene into actually a really touching scene. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because this little girl skeleton, I guess we'll call her, comes up to Allie and she's kind of mortified, and then it just goes in and hugs her. Yeah. And then she kind of calms down and relaxes. Yeah. And lets it happen. And she hugs it back and then wakes up. And I'm like, that. That again, this is where the tone of the movie is. Just, it, it was impressive how well they could do something as goofy as, like, what we, like we said at the beginning, and stuff that comes later, and still manage to do this where you're, like, your eyes are fucking fixated on what's happening. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a powerful scene, and you don't even realize yeah. it until it happens. Yeah. You're like, holy and shit. You're not, and you're not even really aware of any context yet, but you know it's kind of, like, you're it's... It's very evident that it's got some weight to it. You just don't know what it is yet. Right. And that's another thing I like about this is because it doesn't treat you like a fucking moron, this movie, like, at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and makes you kind of pay attention and, and figure it out. Uh, so she wakes up and, and she goes to throw, she gets all flustered and throws a bunch of shit into the fire, a bunch of these files. And um, she stops and looks at that little girl that I guess was the same little girl from that dream. And she kind of has that epiphany where it's like, well, you know, I solved her case and she can rest. And she was thankful for it. That's what I guess what the dream was. Um, you know, relaying to her. So she was like, okay, I'm going to do this fucking case even though I don't want to. But it needs to be solved, right? So these kids could rest. She picked the wrong fucking case to come out of retirement (sighs) for. They all did. Jersey too. (laughs) Yeah, everybody involved in this had a bad fucking day. Oh, man, everybody's having a fucking bad day today. And it's Thanksgiving. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, they're talking about getting the turkey dinner afterwards, getting the, uh, what was it, the peas? The peas. have the peas. (laughs) Where the hell are the peas? It's not cranberry sauce, that's for sure. Fucking Jake's in the corner just huffing. Oh, man, he's fucking, yeah, yep. He's doing that fucking PCP, man. Ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, he's, and then he's like, my mom or something. <laughs> I hate my mom. So we flash forward to, so Allie takes the case and she's, um, I think she's at the police station first, yeah. She goes down to the police station and she's watching the interrogation video of Mr. Chen. I love this whole scene. Man, it is so good because, like, we cut right from her sobbing into the fireplace to, like, TV static, and then it comes up, and then, like, it's the video of him doing the interrogation that we pull out and we're in the police department. Yeah, it's well done. Yeah, it's really good. And and this interview with Mr. Chen is is pretty creepy, actually. Not only is it creepy, but it's fucking believable. Yeah. Yeah, it's because they film it at a single angle with the police officer interrogating him with his, whose voice is off in the back, so you can't see him, which would feel intentional. Like, you, you, you don't want your face shown, whatever, you know, whatever, some kind of confidentiality. But, like, it's just this close-up on this sunken-eyed, sullen, defeated, kind of, like, babbling wacko who's going on and on about how he had to do it, and he's mum- he's talking about, you know, sorcery and mystical shit, and it just looks like a fucking cultist. Right, but he's doing it in a way where he's trying not to sound crazy. Yeah. You know, he's just like, look, they're... they're- they're co- they're becoming hard to manage, and somebody has to deal with them. And he and the cops like, well, you called us for help. Like, what are you talking about? You you called us here for help, and there's these fucking three dead bodies. And he's like, and he's like, uh, well, when they're well fed, they play possum really well. So of course they appear dead, but they're not dead. <laughs> 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 well, because he says too, he he also says that his family's been cursed for like hundreds of you know hundreds of years, something in his family, three centuries, and and that's why he's had a history of morticians in his family, just so they could always keep feeding the fucking things more dead bodies. Yeah, you know, now that we're actually unpacking this as a conversation, I think I'm actually getting it a little more. He fucking says, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He fucking says they are my masters. He says, right? He's not in charge, and and <laughs> and feeding these things and keeping them under control is a penance. For my ancestors' mistakes, 
and it's his yeah. family curse to keep them from like getting out into the world. And yeah, and it's like the- it's like it's like the fucking Baba Duke. Like you have to fucking live with it. He's back. <laughs> John Aston's in the fucking background. <laughs> <laughs> He tried to keep me in the fucking mortuary, but he couldn't keep me satiated. Couldn't keep me there. But yeah, this guy, because he's trying to rationalize insanity. So, like, you know, to to somebody else, this sounds like, you know, complete insanity. But the way he's, the way he's talking about, like you said, he's trying to make it sound like it makes sense. And you're like, nah, dude. Like, <laughs> he's giving bits and pieces. He's, like, doing the Kyle Reese thing. Yeah. And he's like, look, there's a fucking Terminator. There's a thing that's going to kill Sarah Connor, and I need to stop it. And you're like, well, what is it? Well, what is it? And he's like, all right, it's a fucking Chinese demon zombie ghoul (laughs) that eats people (laughs) called the Kyoshi, um, which is really neat. I actually looked up Kyoshi and I couldn't find anything on it. So I don't know if it's like made up for this movie. Uh, Okay, here's the thing. And now like this is actually where I think like maybe this is Japanese, but I don't think it is in the movie. Um, I looked at the word Kyoshi. It's Asian. They don't ever really go into it. it, In Japanese, I think it means pure. Which is what I thought. I, I thought it was Japanese, so I looked that up, and it, it, I think it means purity. Um, I just typed it I into Google. Cannot confirm or, den- or deny. I typed. It, <laughs> I, I had no idea. I typed in Kyoshi Demon or t- Kyoshi Ghoul, and I couldn't find anything. Um, his name's Mister Chen, and I feel like Chen is a Chinese name. Well, the point is, like, like Joe's saying, you know, what can you do? Like the guy, no matter what he says, he's yeah. going to be told he's crazy. Sure. <laughs> so how can you really explain this? They're like, we're going to ship your ass off to fucking to, to Arkham. Okay, what what are you talking about? Actually, I just I googled it real quick. It says expert teacher Kyoshi. So maybe what masters is a loose translation. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Um, either way, they're they're we'll get into it because we they 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 tell the story in a flashback. But um, anyway, he he insinuates that these things are indeed not dead, <laughs> and they're filled with human body parts because he has to satiate their appetites to keep them at bay. Because if they get out. It'll be really bad. So, um, yeah, he basically he basically can't take it anymore. So he's like, yeah, I don't know what to do anymore. I'm going insane. I'm, I'm going crazy trying to take care of these fucking things. And um, I need you to deal with them. <laughs> the cops. And they're like, uh, OK, whatever. You're going to jail for murder one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I do like that. He basically is like, it would be bad. Yeah, pretty much. As far as yeah, like he does a Venkman, it would be bad. Explain bad. I'm fuzzy on that. <laughs> I'm fuzzy on the whole good, bad thing. Yeah, good, bad Imagine thing. three fucking ghouls breaking out, biting people, and turning them into fucking ancient Chinese demons. That's a big Twinkie. That's a big back. Yeah, it sure because is. Because apparently Allie's watching this, uh, you know, like Joe was saying, it's the tape of the interrogation and she's saying you know what maybe he could have done and he's like you know strip the backs off the uh the people inside the coffin no one would notice yeah fed these and gordon things. and jersey are like ah shit that's disgusting you think this kooky oriental's telling the truth or what <laughs> they might as well i do love the idea of her going like yeah she probably took the flesh off the back as a dummies and it reminds me of like the south park left hand killer where the cop is like my god and he just turned his hand over <laughs> Their backs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like it totally makes sense. She like, I mean, isn't that just like standard police work to be a detective? Like you didn't think of that before. Yeah, I also buy the fact that like if they're in a morgue, like why are you gonna? You're not really like if there's two, three bodies on a fucking you know a, on a table and you're not there to see them. Of course you're not gonna look at them. You're not gonna turn them over. Who gives a shit? Well, no, no, no. He's talking about we're talking about the mortician. You know, whenever he had a. Uh... He had a body in a, you know, for a funeral showing, he just stripped the backs because no one would ever notice. Yeah, he cut the meat off the back, fucking pulled out the guts and shit, and he fucking fed it to the zombie kids. Exactly, exactly. Um, But yeah, but no, it is funny, but the police work perspective, it's like, you want to turn him over? Nah. Yeah, well, it's just, he didn't, it didn't occur to him, and she was like, well, what about that? And she, like, thought for five seconds, and he was like, oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah, and this is, this is supposed to be, like, his job? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's why I hired you, kid. We needed you back on the force. That's why That's why I hired you to do my job for me, because you're a psychic. <laughs> you know everything. I don't have this to is, do shit. This is basically cheating, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> I'm about two days away from retirement. <laughs> I, have, I have. I don't even think you really work here, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has the heart to tell you to leave. I have punched the fuck out. He just comes in in a trench coat and he's like, <laughs> and he's like, I'm here to solve a case. I'm a cop. I'm a cop. <laughs> and Gordon's too fucking stupid to tell him otherwise. His badge, like his plastic, just says one, two, three, four, five on it. He's got a cap gun instead. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, I'm sh- your partner, Jersey. It's like sh- okay. It's like Shutter Island, like it just falls apart when someone yeah. you know picks it up. 
What'd you do to my gun? They go to the the titular boneyard after this. Oh, they enter the boneyard TM now. And Undertaker was there, and he was fighting AJ Styles, <laughs> just in the background. Yeah, they're just they just fight in the background of the whole film. <laughs> Could you imagine? Like, yeah, just crashing through walls and shit. I was gonna say, be, I I would love the interaction between Poop and Plads and Paul Bearer. I think that would be the funniest fucking thing. Oh ever. my god, I feel like I feel like she would just like talk him down. He's just like she 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 dresses both him and the Undertaker down, like makes him follow protocol. <laughs> A twenty six E B Vince McMahon double C Yeah, where do you think you're going? Like, <laughs> I don't think so, Buster. Mister Tall, Dark, and Stupid. <laughs> Get him, Flooses. Whatever the fuck your dog's name is. <laughs> Floofsome. Floofs and Floofsums. <laughs> fucking just bites Undertaker in the leg and he runs away. Where AJ Styles the winner? Oh man, he's got that little voice like in a Suburban Commando. Wow, I'm I'm the Undertaker. Oh no, the the poodle. Oh my god. When he shoots fucking nails out of his mouth. Yeah. Famous lost episode. Anyway, um <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's funny cuz like I'm, the memory's in my head, but I'm like, oh there's no episode. Oh, it was that's right. We lost it. I remember recording that in my bathroom down in the basement <laughs> with like towels <laughs> hanging up when we first started. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, like it's yeah, like I said, it's funny to think about that because I, I definitely recall it, but I can't actually. It's like it's like we swear it's real, everybody. We did it. Yeah, <laughs> maybe <laughs> we'll, we'll get we'll get around. We'll circle back again at some point. Yeah. So yeah, they so they go in and uh, Phyllis Diller is Miss Poop and Platts. Uh, fucking okay, she arrives in this movie like the monster from the crate in Creep Show. Like oh yeah, she steps out into a fucking red lit room like ah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking John Harrison score kicks up and she's like hey how are you how you doing here's your quarter for the coke machine and I read on uh, IMDB that uh, the director was like oh I don't want you to wear one of your patented fucking wigs for this film so she just has like her wispy ass hair she just has her regular hair it's great oh I love her hair in this movie cause she makes a joke about it too she's like what is she said like uh, don't get in my hair what little I have left yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's funny though. I like Phyllis Diller. Yeah, this is some raw Diller for sure. Oh, she's she is like like I said, the moment she enters the movie, it becomes a different film altogether. Oh yeah. Because like we had like we had like goofy stuff like, you know, a woman sleeping in a pile of trash, but then like we have like a fucking actor come on and do like just like like genuine goofy comedy. Yeah, well we have an actual comedian come into yeah, the Yeah, exactly. To, to like, the something, fold. like something like a professional steps in, you're like, whoa, hello. Also, like, you get Phyllis Diller, you're not gonna just, like, give her a bit part. No, yeah, exactly. not at all. She's kind of the antagonist for a while. <laughs> the only... Okay, so, like, obviously Phyllis Diller's a prolific comedian, but, like, I don't really know her from much. I've never seen, like, anything... No, she's not in a lot of movies, as far as I know. No, I know, but I know she's done a lot of TV and a lot of, um, you know, comedy specials and stuff, I'm pretty sure. But, like... I know Phyllis Diller from Tales from the Dark Side, where she did that fucking episode with Lawrence Tierney, The Trouble with Mary Jane. They're like psychics uh, 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 and like um, exorcists, and they're trying to exorcise uh, this demon out of a little girl. Uh, I know her from that and like when she was on Scooby-Doo and then this movie. Yeah. Well, it's like people growing up who's like now who see like, I don't know, like. I'm trying to think of like an older comedian who is would be like familiar to us and people older than us, but like to someone who's like maybe 20 years and under. Bobcat Goldthwait. There you go. That's a perfect example, actually, because I think like you take a 17 year old and you, they'd be like, "Why is he yelling?" <laughs> That's just his voice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I I don't know what else she's in, but I know who she is. Exactly. That's what I mean. Exactly. Exactly. Like I don't really know who she is. Like I've never seen her just do her Phyllis Diller thing. I've just seen her be Phyllis Diller in other things. Exactly, and that and like we all know collectively just from the culture, like you know her name carries fucking weight. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. She's like the security guard at the mortuary, and she's a big ball buster about the keys and like you know letting people into certain rooms and procedure. She is. She is the epitome of a like lifetime employee who probably gets employee of the month every fucking month. Um, oh, yeah, for just being an asshole? Yeah, the biggest hard ass who's worked graveyard for 35 fucking years or some shit like that. Longer than that since the goddamn place opened. Yeah, so not only is she a hard ass, but she's out of her fucking mind. <laughs> yeah, she's a little unhinged. And she brings her dog with her to work. Yes, who is a <laughs> small, white, uh, groomed poodle named Flooses. What is it? Floofsums. Just think of the most stereotypical poodle you can think yeah, of, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. The one you see in, like, a fucking dog uh, competition. It's like your classic, like, yeah, French cut poodle with the fucking pink bow and everything. Yeah. 
I'm not a fan, by the way. <laughs> Monsieur, I have to poop. Um, and we forgot to na- say that her name in this movie is Mrs. Poopenplatz. Yep. Oh, she's a Ms. She's a Ms. Poopenplatz. I'm sorry, Ms. Poopenplatz. Ms. Poopenplatz. I wonder why. <laughs> and and like after like the sequences with the dream and the conversations these people had to have. Where, again, the tone where it's like this horrible, like horrifying, awful shit, and then someone goes up and goes like, "Well, sorry, Miss Poopenplatz." <laughs> She's a fucking trip, though, man. But it's never like too much. No, you know? well, her her name is only said out loud like four or five times, so no one's leaning on the fucking sword of this joke to die on it. Like it's just no. well, they don't need to because she's got that fucking name tag staring you in the <laughs> face the whole time. That too. Dude. But no one's like, but no one's going like, ah, go poop your plats, pooping plats. Like, well, all right, yeah. yeah. Like, I think Jersey kind of like has a comment when he first comes down there because he's used to dealing with her BS. Yeah, but that's about it. Yeah. yeah. Um. And who is the uh? Who's the the worker who comes, who's taking the bodies in and out? Doesn't he come in the, the scene delivery too? driver? The delivery driver. Yeah. Marty. Marty. The other comedy relief. Yeah. This is like the guy from the burning in the beginning. <laughs> Fucking Big Mac. Well done. So yeah. So so Jersey and Gordon and uh, Allie roll up on Miss Poop and Platts in the in the in the uh, titular boneyard and she's like what do you what do you want you got your papers to fucking get down there what uh, and he gives her the fucking whatever the the paper that he they can be there so he gains her the paper and then she's like well, who the fuck is that and she's like he and she's uh jersey's like oh that's Allie. she's with me blah 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 and she's like give me your driver's license so she can like verify that's her name and stuff so she takes her fucking license <laughs> and she's looking at it and oh she my goes, god! She looks at Allie and she looks at the license. She goes, "Huh? Porked out, didn't we? <laughs> Fucking brutal! Fucking brutal! This poor woman can't catch a break. No. She's already having a depressive episode. She's trying to break out of her shell and go and do the right thing, and she's getting fucking picked on by the security <laughs> guard, by this balding fucking big mouth old lady, this balding gnome who's behind the fucking counter with her <laughs> fucking poodle, like." Like, sh- shut the fuck up, you little goblin. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the goblin who guards the mortuary. Yeah, God, you fucking little demon. Leave me alone. She kind of looks like Cynthia's doll from Rugrats. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> you mean <laughs> Angelica's doll, Cynthia. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, no, it was Cynthia. Yeah, that's it's it's a, doll yeah it's a Cynthia doll, the ugliest doll I've ever seen in any fiction, <laughs> period. <laughs> well, it's because Angelica was a little shithead to it and fucked it up all the time. Didn't you see the episode, Connor, where she gets it all pristine? Uh, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> the deep, deep fucking Rugrats lore that I saw when I was fucking in middle school. Th- thank you, Sean, for, for dropping that on me. I genuinely did not know that. <laughs> Did you know Daleks are in the Rugrats too? I'm sorry. <laughs> a what? Daleks from Doctor Who are in Rugrats all the time. They they appear in the background. Do they really? Yes, because the invent because the creator of that show was a big Doctor Who fan, which is why Tommy's toy that he uses to get out of the crate is a fucking screwdriver. Oh my god! Boom! Are you are you shitting me? Now you're blowing my fucking mind here. <laughs> I will show you after the show the Daleks in the background. Okay. It'll knock you on your fucking ass. Um, but anyway. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, Poop and Plots is giving everybody shit. Um, and she basically, that's her position for the, like, the remainder of the film um, until something happens to her. Yeah. They go in this like observation room. Yeah. It's like an observation room where they can see the video feed from down in the actual morgue <laughs> itself. So when we were watching uh, Black Christmas, I remarked about how interesting it was to see the actual like the the phone uh uh fuck the phone bugging procedure and how they would track an incoming phone call and to watch yes. someone deal with this fucking massive room of completely outdated technology trying um, to track a fucking phone call <laughs> yes that was captivating and interesting and i found this interesting not as captivating because there's no there's no retention here but like sure an observation room of like let's go in this room and look at a very crude monitor and turn some dials and talk <laughs> into a microphone <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> the intercom. The intercom system. It's so quaint and so novel. I fucking love it. Here's the thing. Like, they're like, all right, let's see them bodies. Okay, so we're introduced to Willie Shepard. <laughs> fucking Dr. Cool. Hip, <laughs> hippie bro. Oh, hippie roper. Yeah, hippie roper, dude. He's fucking hitting that J-boy for sure. Oh, yeah, he's got a bong in the corner. He just leaves there in the office. He's like, hey, man, you want to see these bodies again? I'm trying to eat these mushrooms. Can you hurry it up? I love that he refers to, I believe, Phyllis Dilla's character as um the dragon lady. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's like, I tried to leave. The dragon lady won't let me. I'm trying to go meet Suzanne Summers. Yeah, just... <laughs> I got a gig, man. Um, <laughs> I got I to gotta go a couple doors down. 
you know, yeah. they say three's company. Hey. Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> Get it? Because there's three dead bodies. Anyway, um, so he's like, it, it's funny to me because, like, he's showing them the bodies on the fucking, on the monitor. And it's like this shitty, like, tube TV <laughs> With this bad like feed, it, and it's like it, it's like it's like four inches by five inches, like it's yeah. so small, and it's so far away. Like, and they're like, "Yeah, here's the dead body." Okay, and then they just like have a casual conversation in the middle of this. Yeah, Willie's like, like "Is that Allie?" Yeah, hey, yeah, it's me. Hey, how you been? I we worked on that other case together. I thought you gave this up. I haven't seen you in so long. That's great. How's your mother? Yeah, with more dead kids like these three. Okay, we keep, we got to stop meeting like this. You got to give me that cookie recipe. You know, you brought them for <laughs> Christmas. They were really good last year. Those brownies, those those magic brownies. As they're doing this, Shep is like snapping an arm back in place, like one of these fucking dead children or some shit. <laughs> That's not really happening, but the nature of the conversation would lead you to believe that he could do that, and no one would blink. But he's definitely that guy who puts like his sandwich on top of the body while he's fucking cutting it up. Oh yeah, like, oh, I, mean, I gotta eat my uh, lunch. Me, I can't take a break. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. After working in a hospital, like, and how like s- being sterile and like the sterile field and like. All kinds of stuff, cleanliness, like, and having heard about, like, what some fucking mortuary workers just do, I'm like, I could never be in your field. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hard pass. So, uh, Allie asks Willie to cut a piece of hair off because, like, her whole thing is the psychometry thing. So she could show she wants to hold on to the hair and, and, and see what the deal is with these kids. Yeah, because they won't they won't release the bodies or let them touch them because there's still evidence. She can't go down. Yeah. Yet. Um, so he gets her the hair and he brings, and she shoot and he shoots it up there and she like sits in like this waiting room that's still upstairs. Well, uh, hold on. He shoots it up the trolley and first Kevin McAllister comes out <laughs> then Hendrix fucking comes out. He pokes his head out and said, ah, son of a bitch. I finally made it out of this fucking trolley. I've been pulling on this fucking thing for hours. It's in a different dimension altogether. But that, no, that doesn't happen. Gunner, <laughs> Gunner fucking pops out too. He's like, hey, everybody. Hey, get back down there. Yeah. Be, be, be about your business. I'm going to go now. Plumber. Bye. Allie just turns to fucking Gordon and uh, Jersey and is like, you guys all see that? They're like, huh? Huh? Uh-huh, what? what? <laughs> Never mind. Uh, I'll take the hair into a quiet room. Jersey's like, I see lots of stuff nowadays. I don't ever stop hitting the booze. I didn't. I got the DTs. Goodbye. <laughs> so, yeah, she takes the hair into the other room. Then uh, we have this exchange between Jersey and Gordon about alley and he's like what's with the witch man gordon's like what's with the witch dude hey how does she like know how to do it like was she born with it maybe it's maybelline i don't know <laughs> and uh and jersey's like listen she had ovarian cancer she beat that cancer but when she beat that cancer she started having these weird visions and dreams and shit uh about kids because she also lost a kid um and that is the origin story for how she has this power. Yeah, sure. Why not? Which is kind of cool because it's like, okay, she went through this like super traumatic, two traumatic experiences and came out the other end and now she has some kind of psychic ability. Yeah, I kind of love the idea of like, I've always referred to it as like the psychic wilderness where it's like it's it's weird events that happen like, you know, supernaturally to someone um, just out of like cosmically good or bad events. Um, so I always find this stuff to be interesting. And the idea, like, something bad, something so tragic could happen to someone that the way they come out of it is they develop superpowers is fucking awesome. No, absolutely. It's better than the Daniel Baldwin bullshit where you're, like, a mutant or something. I got the script! It's right here! (laughs) It says I have telekinesis! It says I have powers, so I do! (laughs) Or whatever. John Hurt grabs him by the throat and says, Stop wasting all the fucking paper in my baby! (laughs) I came from a different time period. There's no paper here. What are you doing? <laughs> Baby can't ingest whole trees. It only takes a very specific brand. I'm not even sure how I keep this thing gassed. <laughs> it keeps spitting it out of the goddamn glove compartment. And it flies through space. I can't even explain that one. Uh, 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 Jersey gives Gordon his lucky rabbit's foot for some reason. It's important. No, no. He has... Okay, so Gordon has on his keychain this lucky rabbit's foot that is also a lighter. I need me one of these things, dude. And he keeps busting it out occasionally just, like, to fuck with it when he's bored or, you know, in case it's dark, you know, shit you use a lighter for. And it comes back later. I laughed out loud because I forgot that it was a lighter. And when I saw him hold this goddamn <laughs> rabbit's foot up and then spark a fucking flame from it, I ducked. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was like, I don't know where the fuck they sell those, but I need one of those. Oh, yeah. I'm sure if you Googled it, you can probably find one. That's a birthday gift. Anybody listening? Um, I want a rabbit's foot lighter. Perfect. So then we get introduced to, to, to Marty. And Marty's coming in. He can't make a delivery because, like, the fucking pneumatic doors are uh, broken in the basement. And Poopin' Platz is giving him a hard time because he's... He's like, fuck you, I gotta use this elevator because I gotta transport this dead body into the morgue. Yeah. And she's like, fuck you, you can't go through the other doors, you can't use this place, and blah, blah, blah. So it's a whole big fucking thing, and then, like, Jersey hears, Jersey and Gordon go out and hear them fucking fighting. It's it's basically the whole point of this is to tell the audience about these broken doors. Yeah. And that there's an additional elevator for later in the movie when that's relevant. <laughs> like, when you think about it. Yeah, no, totally. And But there's also a little tidbit dropped here where Phil Stiller starts complaining about the fact that there's a there was a bunch of people laid off um, and that they all went over to the other new hospital. Yeah, oh, because yeah. they, they kind of mentioned that earlier, how there's a new hospital being built mm-hmm. or was recently built to replace all the old ones. Yeah, and they're kind of just like, what's left here and this place is probably going to close soon because they get the quote unquote overflow. Yeah. And I love the idea that like they call it the boneyard and it's this like neglected facility that's understaffed and kind of falling apart. Like that's kind of a cool way to refer to this place. Like if you're an employee internally and you know, it's, you know, it being a mortuary, like that's a really, really cool title for it or name for it. Yeah. It also, it also adds a level of sleaziness to the whole thing. Oh, yeah. We're like, you're that jaded, but you're like, yeah, welcome to the fucking boneyard. Yeah, we got dead people. We don't give a shit. It's, this is where all, this is basically where all the scum comes, is what she's basically saying. Yeah, we're overflow of corpses because they're the, the ones that, like, the big building doesn't want to deal with. Yeah, it's like the the murderers or the suicides yeah. or who could give a shit. Yeah, you take the ODs and suicides. Or, and- or the bodies that the cops don't really look over that well. Right. Yeah. They don't even really check to see if they're dead or alive. Or the corpses of three uh Chinese demon children. Yeah. Anything out of the ordinary. <laughs> and and poor old Mr. Chen <laughs> when we get to it. Oh yeah. So like Joe was saying Marty's bringing in this body so he finally gets in the mortuary or no, I'm sorry. He he's arguing with Poop and Platts and while he's arguing I don't know how the fuck this happens but like a screw gets knocked out of the stretcher and falls on her dog's head. <laughs> And they're basically, and then like, and then again, the words are exchanged, and then and then Gordon helps Marty with this fucking uh, body into the elevator, and it's so great because Jersey comes up with the fucking um, elevator key, and he goes to open the elevator, and this fucking gurney just collapses, and this fucking yeah. dead body's hand just smacks Gordon in the face. Yep, it's like in his mouth and shit. Yep. And it was a um, uh, it was a girl who killed herself via uh, what I presume is a, a hair dryer in the bathtub. Yeah, Marty tells him he's like he's like man, it's suicide. Just add water, you know what I mean? And he holds up a fucking uh, hair dryer. That is a that is a deliciously morbid line, by the way. <laughs> Just add water. I mean, you work in that kind of industry, you're gonna have that kind of uh, humor. It, here, here's the thing, we like. As a veterinary worker, like, yeah, we develop kind of a, like, you do develop a sick sense of humor to deal with some stuff. You don't actually feel that way, but yeah, it's, you say stuff to kind of cope. So I totally get it. And it is kind of funny. Yeah. He, we also, uh, Jersey gets a call at this point too. And we learn that fucking Mr. Chen stole a service revolver and blew his brains out, (laughs) uh, on his way to the asylum. Yeah, Yeah. And Jersey's just like on the phone, like, what? Wait, really? Aw, damn. Aw, shucks. (laughs) <laughs> this is, oh, that's just great, he says, and then hangs up the phone. Well, this ruffles my jimmies. Now what am I supposed to do? I'm trying to crack this case. He goes to help move that stretcher, and because that bolt fell earlier and nobody noticed, the stretcher starts fucking collapsing. So you have you have this guy, Gordon, and uh, Mr. Roper fucking dragging <laughs> the stretcher in with Marty. And, and the whole time they're like, oh, this is fucking heavy, look out. Meanwhile, this girl's arm's just hanging out loose, and you see her arm moving and shit, and nobody notices. And I'm sitting here in the audience like, okay, so did these uh, demon children resurrect her? Like, what are, what are they going for? It's like That was that was my initial guess. They should have played that one a little bit closer to the chest. Like, I, I didn't need that little hand twitch before that. Yeah. Yeah. Because what happens in, in a little bit. Because, because while this is all happening... Allie's upstairs... With the with the lock of hair in that in that sitting room. Yeah, and she's sitting there thinking, and we have this amazing flashback because it goes back to when this child died, 
which was, as far as we can tell, hundreds of years ago based on this scene. Mm -hmm. We're in, like, ancient China, and um, this little kid is, like, wrapped up in this, like, burial uh, garb, for lack of a better term. And this fucking Chinese wizard is, like, performing this ritual where he, like, cuts a finger off of each of the parents and then makes this concoction and, like, pours the shit onto the kid and then the kid, uh, you know, comes back to life. So whatever this ritual was, this kid is now in infested with a demon or a zombie or a ghoul or whatever you want to call it yeah it appeared to be like a uh, you know please bring our children back but it's like okay but at what cost like yeah sure i'll do it but i'm also going to make them into my own personal ghouls yeah you, you pay the ultimate price yeah and like i said now that we're talking about it it all kind of and now it all ties together a little easier for me because for some like when i got to this flashback i was like what's happening um <laughs> yeah but now that yeah. we're now that we're talking about it it lines up much clearer in my head so yeah i mean the one thing i learned from this scene folks don't cross a wizard. Yeah, yeah, don't don't fuck with a wizard. <laughs> don't ask him to bring your dead kid back. It's never a good thing. We finally found an evil wizard in the MDU. Finally. <laughs> well, you know, depending on the day, month, or year, I, I think any of the fucking wizards could be a pretty bad dude. I like I like how they, like they're very morally ambiguous. It's like, yeah, they're supposed to fight John Hurt, but like they're just reprehensible pieces of shit. <laughs> Only if they have to, right? Otherwise, they're just doing stupid shit. Otherwise, get the fuck off my lawn. Other <laughs> Otherwise, fuck you. I'm gonna kill this thirty pack of Bud Dry. <laughs> right. Well, you, you got to remember Gunnar Hansen. He, he wasn't always a good guy. He was fucking Leatherface. Then in Mosquito, he was like, he robbed that bank. He was a bank robber and he killed people. Yeah. So they're like, they're like, they're like Hellspawn. Like they get brought back to life, but like they're essentially, you know, servants for a higher power. <laughs> well, not that we're aware of. It could happen one day. We might find out of it. You know, John Hurt is a, is a higher power as we've talked about on this show. Yeah. I mean, what if they're all, what if they're all one and the same? It's yet to be seen. Who knows who's really pulling the strings? We're we're just peons observing this all from the bottom, okay? Yes. We're like, what's his yes. face from those Marvel books? It's like trying to comprehend the Elder Gods. Yeah. So while Allie's having this fucking vision and starting to really freak out about it, you cut back to downstairs, and uh, they have this girl up on the table, and uh, Shep and fucking... Uh, well, Shep's like checking her out like, yeah, you're gonna watch me cut into her? <laughs> yeah. And Jersey's like, yeah, uh, uh, you know, I gotta go upstairs. I just got a phone call. Fucking Chen killed himself. Uh, <laughs> are you gonna watch this, Gordon? Or are you coming up? P.S. There's like five other morticians down here. Yeah, it is a fucking party down there. Like they they roll in. They're, they're like, hey, we are hanging out. Music. We're having a grand old time. He's like, hey, Gordon, you gonna puke in this fucking bucket or what? You want to see him chop up this fucking dead girl? Yeah. <laughs> They're like the literal peanut gallery commenting <laughs> on everything this guy says. Yeah, I didn't think I'd ever meet a bunch of mortuary frat boys. Like, they're all like, Wah! Yeah, well, you need levity because dead bodies, question mark. Yeah, because your job, your job is fucking is, is dark and awful, and I would never want to do that. Well, why do you think Shep smokes so much marijuana? He's going to deal with these clowns. Oh, man, he's got that fucking big bone. He's got to mellow out before he goes to work. Mm hmm While he's at work, too. So he slices into this fucking neck, and like... First of all, the girl wakes up. Apparently, she wasn't dead. And second of all, I'm sitting here wondering, how did you not just fucking kill her with that incision? Right? She slit her fucking carotid artery or something. Yeah! Well, well, it looks like he started from kind of the back of her neck. And um, honestly, like, the first poke of that thing probably woke her up. And I think what we're seeing is bleeding. Because, like, those that shit is sharp as fuck. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But he fucking totally, like, cut her along the fucking jugular. <laughs> yeah, I think logistically it kind of doesn't make sense, but also at the same time it's like, eh, you know, whatever. What was he doing? What was he going to do? I think, I think, I well, like. I, well, I think he was going to do an autopsy. I think he was supposed to start, like, the Y incision that you see, like, kind of uh, across the chest, but, like, I'm not sure why he was starting way the fuck up there. Was that one of the parts that drain the blood? Is that one of the spots? I think that's one of the, where they make the incision to put the fucking thing in to I drain mean, them. you know, maybe, I'm, you know. I'm not a, uh, a mortician, but that does make sense. That could also be Hippie Roper's version of doing it because the director said, hey, the spot where you really would do that, she would just die instantly. So uh, we're going to do it up here because it looks better. Yeah, start behind the ear. <laughs> He's trying to show off in front of Gordon, like gross him out. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that too. <laughs> I'm going to cut this chick's throat off. While they're fucking around with like vomit buckets and this dead body, you kind of see in the background the three uh, demon children waking up and starting to acclimate to their surroundings oh my god dude so Allie's having the vision and when she comes back from ancient china she ends up down in the morgue but 
as a vision, right? Right. So she can. So she's like in the back. The way this is set up is like she's in the back room where the where the children's bodies are being kept. Yeah. And it's like this dark room, and it's a shot uh, through uh, the window of this room, and in that opposing room is where everybody is with the body and on all the chaos happening because you know the you know the cadaver is not a cadaver the the chick is alive this fucking scene where these zombie children wake up is absolutely fucking bone chilling this gross little hand comes up and like grabs its face like where the sheet is and pulls it off (laughs) and these fucking things are revealed for the first time and oh my god they are terrifying they're like we were talking before about these um these ghouls and how they look and i kind of i've had the like i've had a couple images pulled up here what we forgot to mention is like other details like their hairline is like scaled all the way back receded yeah it's receded and they have barely any hair left and like we said goopy but we're not really elaborating like how much of them is just like falling off of them at all times they're rotten they are rotten as shit like because they've been artificially kept alive for so fucking long and like this flesh is barely sustaining itself they're disgusting looking (laughs) it cannot be said enough times they're wet and black and green and all kinds of fucking gross colors yeah and they make awful sounds but they're also kids so yeah that too while 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 they want to eat your flesh they also like you know little bunny rabbits (laughs) well they're also tiny terrors which connor is notoriously does not like (laughs) yeah but these scared the fuck out of me like (laughs) (laughs) these are scary little fucks dude they have fucking tails and shit well that and like it's because of um something else that like that freaks me as like the perversion of nature and that's what this is to me it's like those are those are children that some fucked up magic turned into those god-awful things yeah um and so there's a there's a degree of like I wouldn't say reality, but tangibility to it. Whereas, like, Chucky is a fucking prop, and I'm not afraid of him, or I'm not really entertained by him. But, like, this is, like, I'm, like, I can, like, those are autonomous human beings who are, who, you know, who look like that. Well, these are real children in these in these makeups. Yes, and that's also what makes it super effective. And the way that they move and the way that they were directed to move is, f- oh, my God, dude. It is so fucking creepy. It's so effective, and I cannot stress how creepy these things are like you need to see these things in action yeah well like if they're not like running like little tiny like i wouldn't say monkeys but like like little fucking creatures they're constantly reaching out for shit and just wanting to like you know wipe your their ghost you know gross bodies over your face they do these this weird thing where they like arch their backs up and like stick their chests out and yeah Yeah, like a newborn baby walk, like the fucking awkward as shit like and they like crouch and like twist and like do all this weird gross shit so, uh, so Allie's in there as like a vision, and this fucking thing turns to her and like le- reaches for her, and she snaps out of it, and she's back in the uh, upstairs. So she's like, "Holy shit, these things are fucking awake! I gotta go warn them." So she runs over to Poop and Platts, and uh, she's like, "Goddamn, Poop and Platts! I need to go down the fucking elevator and like warn them." <laughs> I'm sorry. And she's like, "What do you mean warn them? What what are they what are they got to be scared of down there? It's a bunch of stiffs." And she's like, "No, the body's alive." And she's like, "Huh." Well, I'll try to call him. <laughs> she doesn't get through. <laughs> Ain't that a thing? Allie ends up stealing the fucking elevator key, or all of Poop and Plast's keys, and like goes down the elevator. I love it's filmed like a power move. Like there's a close up of the keys, and Allie's like, "Ah!" And she reaches over and grabs him, and there's like a dramatic musical sting. <laughs> there's like a full stop where it just holds on Phyllis Diller as this woman goes down the elevator, and she's just yeah. like, "Fat bitch!" Yeah. <laughs> Get her, Fufu. <laughs> Get her, Floofsums. Oh, the fucking dog runs into the elevator, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, it chases her. And Allie has, like, a duel with this fucking poodle. Yeah, they get down the bottom floor, and you hear her kick this fucking dog, and it runs <laughs> down <laughs> the elevator. It It runs towards danger. I don't advocate violence on dogs, but that shit was funny. Again, we're, the tonal, it just, just flip-flops again. Like, that was a funny scene, and now, like, we're down this creepy hallway. It's also a sound like a dog wouldn't make, and it happens off screen. You're like, I, 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 and then just fucking runs away, like. Cartoon dog. But yeah, like, it, you know, and then it's one of those scenes again where it's like, we just went from something pretty fucking funny, or or inten- intentionally uh, funny, to something like, completely terrifying. Like, now we're walking down this fucking hallway, and it's dead quiet. There's nothing going on. Oh, yeah. Broken windows, blood everywhere. She gets into the fucking room where everybody was. Um, it reminded me of um 
when uh Rick Grimes wakes up in the first episode of Walking Dead. Yeah, where you're sure, just yeah. kind of like you're like or or 28 days later when Jim wakes up, like especially because of the medical facility aspect where it's like. What the fuck happened here, and where the fuck is everybody? Well, she grabs that axe, like, real quick. Yeah. There's blood all over the place. There's broken fucking glass everywhere. Everything's fucked up. With the axe, I love the fact that the glass was already broken. Mm -hmm. Like somebody was trying to reach for it. Which means that somebody, somebody already went for it and failed. And I thought that was just a cool fucking visual story to tell that, like, Someone made an attempt to fight back and got completely wrecked. So she tips to she's tiptoeing around this place, and there's not any sign of life. So she peeks over this fucking um, broken window into the room where she had, like, traveled, like, spiritually and saw the kids wake up. The zombie children, or the ghoul children, have dragged all of the morticians into this room, and they're, like, on these, like... What do you want to call them? Like, like shelves? They like, put them on. They put them on shelves. Yeah, like they're on like shelves, like where you'd stack like cadavers, and they're just like eating these people. This one, this one's like eating this dude's guts out of his rib cage, like his lungs and shit. And the other one's like eating this other dude's brains. That the one with the rib cage is really cool looking because it's like. It look his ribs are blasted outwards. Yeah, like they were like ripped out of his yeah, chest. Yeah, like, like something really violent happened there. And yeah, the other one's like sitting on a guy's head, like eating his face. Um, it's terrifying. And the sound effects are <laughs> disgusting. Are gross. Everything in this movie is squishy and nasty. <laughs> <laughs> so Allie ends up stepping on a piece of glass and like gets her attention and they chase her through the fucking hallway and there's a point where she gets to the end of the door uh, or she gets to the elevator and she uh, tries to, to work it but something happens where like it doesn't work she doesn't uh, I, I think she forgets she has the keys on her or some shit but she runs down this hallway and like forgets she, right Sean she like forgets she has the keys in her pocket she turns around and and just the doors of the room she was in just start fucking swinging open, but oh, nothing comes out. Oh, God, that was creepy. And then all of a sudden, you hear them fucking tromping through the air duct system, like, towards her. Right. Man, it's fucking freaky. And she's just looking up, because she knows they're coming, but she doesn't know when or where. Yeah, and it's very evocative, of, like, in the first, is it, uh, Jaws? Uh, when he's, when it's plowing through the fucking, um... The doc? Oh, a little bit, yeah. Yes, yeah, my wife's holiday roast. Yeah. Yeah, it reminded me of that. It's just, except it's in a vertical, it, it's, you know, this the space is switched upwards in a fucking air, uh, it's an air shaft. Um, mm -hmm. Or even and like the camera when the, is in the Deep being... Rising, when the fucking tentacles are coming down the sides of the wall. Yes, and like, and like the camera's pulling forward, and like the, you can see, like, the, there's very visible footsteps, there's, the, you know, the, the, the thing, fucking thing vibrates, and there's the sounds coming closer to you, it's awesome. The sound design is amazing. <laughs> it's really good. Uh, and then it just stops and she's freaked out and she turns and she looks and around the corner. So that was one of them in the air duck. The other one is a little girl and it has this little doll that it keeps with it. And it like peeks the doll head around the fucking corner and then like reveals itself. Yeah, mm, and then, yeah. <laughs> and, and then that one and then another one come out and they're fucking disgusting and gross and, and moving all weird and shit. And then Jersey pops up from behind her and fucking puts a hole, fucking blows a hole in this thing's chest and then its head and then it doesn't die. He's like, whoa. And he's like, yeah. what the fuck? I just shot it with my 38 in the fucking head and it didn't die. I shot him six times. <laughs> six times. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, Dr. Loomis, you're so quotable. <laughs> but it's just the one line. <laughs> so, so then they then they like make a break for the room where everybody is uh, holding out. And um, Shep has survived. Dana, the girl who was thought to be dead, who's not dead, the, the attempted suicide. And Gordon are alive, and so is Jersey. Um, so it's the five of them in this room trying to make a plan to get the fuck out of there. And Shep's leg is all fucked up. He can't really well he can't really walk good on it. Yeah. I do like the the what's it called? Like the injury makeup on everybody is all, uh looks good the entire film. Um the the gore in this movie is also fantastic. Uh all around. Um I know we talked about like, you know, the way the zombies looked, but everything else Um I, I would argue a little bit against that because I, I don't disagree with that, but I feel like this movie does a lot of cutaways and a lot of shit off screen. A lot of it, uh, it, it doesn't necessarily take away from it for me, um, but they don't they don't show the goods a lot. It's more so what the creatures look like is really fucking disgusting. Yeah, it's always like the aftermath of something. Um, like there's no exploding heads in this movie for sure. 
Um, but all the, I guess, like, the makeup effects and, like, the corpse stuff uh, all looks really good. And, like, just the level of carnage that they paint on screen is convincing enough, and I really like it. Well, right, because you have, like, those claw marks and shit all over the wall. Yeah. Like, you know, we were talking about Resident Evil a minute ago. Yeah. Uh, same kind of thing. I was getting, you know, Resident Evil vibes just watching this. Like, even just Allie walking around with that axe, I was like, damn, this would make a fucking pretty intense video game, honestly. Yeah, man. That was something I didn't think of was Resident Evil, especially, I guess, like, the first uh, the first game where you always come into, like, a room where you're like, oh, there's a puddle of blood around the bathtub, and the bathtub's full of water, and this thing's tipped over. I should leave. Yeah, don't <laughs> unplug it. <laughs> yeah, don't, unpl- don't unplug the bathtub, yeah. people, for a game in- <laughs> that you should play from 1998. But yeah, it's kind of one of those things where it's psychological, like kind of like in just in the vein of Text Chains from Massacre, where you're like, wow, that was the grossest, bloodiest movie I've ever seen. Yeah. But there's really not any carnage in it, per se. Yeah, it's just the fact... It's the fact that it is happening that's enough for the viewer. Like, yeah, and there's enough gross shit that happens with these fucking dead kids. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Goopy yeah. things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, the goopiness intensifies. I hope everyone knows this. <laughs> well, because they realize they're in, like, the evidence locker, I guess. I don't know what the fuck you would <laughs> even call this in a mortuary. <laughs> this fucking scene amuses the fuck out of me because, like, they're, like, they go through, like, I do like this. But what is in this evidence room looks like a bunch of Batman villains got arrested. Yeah, pretty. <laughs> There's a fucking umbrella. Dude, this this fucking machine gun Gordon picks up. There is there is a fully operational loaded like starship troopers, Star Wars stormtrooper blaster or some Man. shit. This looks like a homemade Uzi or some shit. Like what the? F- it's got like a coil on it. It is like a it is a high power automatic rifle. This looks like some shit that Danny Glover would have in his trunk in Predator Two. Yeah. It kind of looked like. <laughs> it, that just derailed me. Because because <laughs> Allie she finds some fucking she finds some pipe bombs in there and Jersey's like whoa he's like. They're deactivated, but uh, you don't want to be too careful. Meanwhile, Gordon's in the background with this machine gun, <laughs> fucking pointing it around like, "Whoa, look at me, man!" He's, he's doing like the fucking, he's doing like the laser blast shit, where he's like, "Bang, bang, 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 bang" in the back, like this fucking, this devastating rifle. He even says he's like, he's like, "Oh, this is cool. Here we go. This is what I need. This is my penis." Well, while they're looking at all this evidence, they're like, "Oh, fuck! The elevator's opening," and then Poop and Platz comes down. Oh, we haven't, we haven't talked about uh, Dana. Yet the uh, the girl who woke up. Oh yeah, real quick. There's just two things that were in that scene previous to the evidence room before they leave. Um, one is the fact that um, Ali kind of uh, brings up the idea that like, oh well, maybe Mr. Chen let this thing out by accident twice before, and that's why there's three of these things, kind of insinuating that these ghouls are zombies and can kind of turn people into things. Right. And then the other one is the is the the suicide conversation she has with Dana, Ugh. and basically Allie's like, "What's wrong with you? Like, why'd you do that?" And she's like, "You got so much to live for." And she's like, "Why would I? Why why live? Why bother?" Yeah, she basically was like, "I quit. Like, I I tapped out. Like, I I got to the point where I couldn't take it anymore." And and you know, and for all intents and purposes, she's pretty much convinced that she died. Yeah. Well, yeah, right. And you woke up in this fucking nightmare. Yeah, you wake up in a fucking morgue. Like, you're pretty much like. To to that person, you've been resurrected for God's sake. Well, yeah, uh, we we get, we we dive into that backstory a little bit more a little, in a little bit. Yeah, yeah, but this is where you dance with it and again, like the 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 it's it's the balancing of tone that comes roaring back again because whenever there's two people in this movie who sit down to have like a heart to heart, it is always good. Oh yeah, it, it like it's very powerful, and it it's one of those things where you're like not waiting for the next ghoul thing to happen you know you're like okay i want to hang out with these guys and i hope they all make it out okay right yeah yeah i never felt like i was uh like any given scene was wasting my time no right so poop and platz comes down on the fucking elevator and she's like ah what the fuck she's like where's my fucking dog we, what's going on here and then we get the old fucking con- crying kid trick <laughs> Famously used by leprechauns. Yeah. Yeah. Some some leprechauns who have uh, starfishes attached to the front of their Johnson. It's possible. I definitely don't put my penis in it. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say here, Connor. He definitely is. No bones about it. He had to give it back to Lubden when he went up to the land of the leprechauns. <laughs> we're, not, we're not jerking around to you. Literally. Oh, I have some green shoot, why don't you? <laughs> Shamrock me, baby. Uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> right in the old mouth hole. So Poop and Platts, Poop and Platts goes up to the crying child, and it turns around, and of course it's this horrifying fucking ghoul. Well, dig, man. These these fucking demons can apparently turn into regular looking kids just for this specific scene. It's like luring Poop and Platts towards it. It's in like a chair with its back to her. But when we cut to the kid, it's just like a, a little Asian boy covered in like goo. Not a demon though, or not like rotten. Yeah. Um. And then she goes up to it and hears a noise, and this and this other one drops out of the fucking ceiling. Oh yeah. Oh man, it's fucking scary. And this is like, uh, I'm sure if you look this movie up, you see you've you've seen this still where the kid like is crouching and like twists itself and like looks up. Is this on the poster? Or just I'm thinking of something else. No, it's just like if you look up the boneyard ghouls, like this is one of those pictures that. Pops oh okay. Up. Yeah. Well, then of course they all, they all run out to try to save Poop and Platts. With fucking Gordon's got this machine gun. Yeah, and fucking one jumps on her from the other room and <laughs> into uh, the 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 chem lab or the fucking what is it, what is it called? Yeah, yeah, it's the chem lab, basically like a chem lab. Yeah, forensic chemistry lab. Yeah, they have this like fucking this this fucking brawl with this thing in like a chemistry lab. It's barely like a lab. It's like a storage closet or some shit because like <laughs> there's no equipment and there's just like noxious chemicals just like all in one place silver nitrate on the fucking shelf yeah which was like it, okay so like they're having this fucking fight with this thing and um someone fucking they don't knock the shelf on it first do they well no J- uh, gordon pulls a fucking joey from deep rising and like shoots around this fucking ghoul and it like flees up into the fucking uh air duct again yeah, because gordon has a learning curve with his rifle that you experience <laughs> in real time <laughs> <laughs> it's got a hell of a kick. It's got a hell Thanks, of a kick. Sagat. Yeah, first he runs out and goes out like Simon Basel with this fucking thing. It's like, bah, 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 <laughs> and hits everything but the thing he needs to fucking shoot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, fucking Poop and Platz is tangling with this fucking demon child in this room. And she like throws it off and just nonchalantly pushes the shelf over onto it and just drops this fucking jar of acid all over it. I died when she pushes the shelf over because she does it like, well, fuck you. Um, I also scream like, no, you'll make her a speedster. This is exactly what happened to Barry Allen. <laughs> what, you got acid dumped on him? <laughs> His The original origin is that he was struck by lightning while falling into a giant like a shelf of chemicals. Oh. <laughs> and that's initially what gave him speed powers. But then like the speed force happened later on because that's less ridiculous, I guess. <laughs> I just remember fucking uh, Flashpoint when they tried to recreate that because he lost his powers and he's just like all mangled on the floor because oh it doesn't work the first time. He just gets he just gets struck by lightning and gets third degree burn. Yeah, Thomas Wayne did that to him. Yeah, yeah, and Thomas Wayne's like, okay, well that was fucking stupid. Well, back to the drawing board. But I I do wonder with this movie if Phyllis Diller was just like, all right, I'll do this horror movie. I'm I'm basically retired, but uh, I'm one caveat. I get to kill one of these fuckers. Oh, you're going to rub goo in my mouth? Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. That's my consequence. I'll do it. <laughs> so, real quick, before we get to that, um, Gordon Gordon, and uh, Dana run into the elevator. Because this fucking, the, the girl one's, like, trying to open the fucking elevator, and she almost gets away. And he ends up sticking the fucking gun in and just shooting the living shit out of this thing. Yeah. Um. And, you, you like, you don't see what he's shooting, but... He's just spraying ammunition into this, like, you know, this box. There's just sparks, and, like, you hear squishy sounds, and, like, he fucking annihilates this thing. (laughs) He ends up, like, turning this thing into a puddle of shit. And you just see the uh, name tag attached to the gun, and it just says John Woo, and it's like, okay. Because there's no, there's no fucking way this thing has this much ammunition. I'm sorry. He points to his head, he's a bandana bandana on, and he goes, infinite ammo. He does keep yeah, loading it yeah. though. He does keep loading it. Yeah. No, he does. He does. But every clip just every clip just has like the infinity symbol on it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Until they have to change the camera angle. Yeah. Yep. Uh so he wastes his fucking thing and like the doors open and, and this gross puppet comes out and just fucking slops on the floor. So that's one down. I, I love <laughs> I love it. He opens the doors and like the light fixture falls the fuck down. There's bullet holes everywhere. There's sparks like it, like even walls he couldn't conceivably shoot are shot like the walls that were like facing uh, like like the inward ones like the buttons like they have bullet holes in them because presumably ricochet or something. Yeah, because then like he, as he opens it up, he, he like sees that he also shot the shit out of the control board for the elevator. So it's like busted. Yeah, like. <laughs> It's like fucking an, trash. An possible amount of ammunition was sprayed in this elevator. And yeah, like Joe said, <laughs> this thing just falls forward. 
Well, this poor girl, Dana, too, with no fucking shoes on. She's like, all this, like, gooping shits going in between her toes while she's standing there. It looks like fish guts. Yeah, yeah man, she's stepping in that fucking goop for sure. Oh, yeah, and the sound is great. And this Gallagher-ass cop's, like, looking around on the, in the fucking <laughs> ceiling like, hey, uh, I think we can get out this way. <laughs> Hop on up. Doesn't Jersey call him on, like, an intercom or something like that? Or you, Oh, the, the vent, that's right. Yeah, they can hear him through the air vents, which I think is actually kind of cool. Yeah, but before that, um, they go back. Poop and Platts fucking gets attacked again because that one isn't dead. Well, remember when they're full, there you can play possum real good. Jersey goes to fucking grab this thing because it reaches out and it, it's got like Phyllis Diller by the throat. It ends up pulling part of its brain out and sticking it in her fucking <laughs> mouth, like green yeah, goop shit, literally. like force feeding this woman part of its fucking brain. And let me tell you something: Phyllis Diller sells this. Better than anyone asked her to, okay? Oh, man. Because she it's is, great. Uh, she is, uh, the rest oh, yeah. of she's, it, like, she's, the whole she is fucking time. gagging for 25 minutes because, yeah, you would. I just love the idea of this thing going, like, oh, you want to kill me? Huh? Fuck you. Here's a piece of my skin. <laughs> she goes to the director. She's like, how do you want me to sell this? He's like, well, just stand by a fucking sink and drink water for 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Just, All right. just hover with your your head out of camera and go, <laughs> and then say freight elevator with a mouthful of water. Yeah, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. I know she is. She is like she's gargling and choking for so long. You'd you'd think this thing like scalped itself and shoved its entire wad of hair down her throat because she's just constantly like. <laughs> well, I mean to be fair, like they are not concerned enough about what happened to this woman. Oh yeah. No. It pulled part of its fucking brain out and shoved it in her mouth. How how is that okay? And again, I would be I, I would be grabbing chemicals from the floor that broke off and pouring them down my throat in the hopes that it would get that shit out of my mouth. I'd be drinking that fucking. Eh, I'm not gonna make that joke. Oh, where where, where are you going with that one? <laughs> you fucking said a leprechaun fucks a starfish in the mouth and comes in shamrock shakes. What were you gonna well, say? Well, no, I just didn't want to go. I'll tell you after. Okay. Anyway, uh, Shep makes a comment later where he's like, "I don't know. I get she put that goo in her mouth. I guess it's poison?" Question mark and just throws his hands up in the air. Who cares? If she dies, she dies. Yeah, it's poop and plats. Nobody likes her anyway. That's one of those ones where it's like, eh, eh. yeah, let it go. <laughs> Should we be worried? I mean, are you? <laughs> Maybe. Well, while they're they, they also at this point, Shep for some reason just magically remembers they're like, "Oh yeah, you know what? This room we're in, the elevator's actually kind of close. If you go through a different exit." They're like, oh, no shit, okay. They're, they get split up at one point, and Gordon and Dana, like, try to climb through the elevator that's busted to get through, like, an emergency uh, shaft. And um, this is where we have that quick heart-to-heart -heart again where we elaborate on her, like, uh, suicide attempt. Mm, man, and, like, I gotta say, like, Gordon kind of looks like a fucking fool for a few minutes here. Um... Because, like, the gravity of this conversation is way over his head. Because he's like, oh, you're so pretty and you had so much to live for and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, mm -mm, oh, my mm, God. Mm, 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 stop he, it. <laughs> he, he, bas he basically just says, well, you're pretty. Yeah. I don't know anything about you, though, but you're hot. I mean, I guess it worked. But I think that kind of adds to the conversation. I think it adds to the, uh, the weight of it because, like, he is... He there's no way he could relate to what the fuck this girl just went through when he's no. trying his best, but he sucks at it. And she's just like... She's just, like, pouring her heart out, and he's like, well, you sure look nice. <laughs> yeah, because she says some shit like, you know, life just finally, like, she just gave in to everything and, like, all the pressure or all of whatever. I mean, we don't really go into it. She just kind of sums it up broadly, and she yeah. basically is just like, you know, I let life fall in on me, and I had the opportunity to fucking do it, and I did it, and it was stupid. Um that's pretty much it. And he's like, yeah, uh, well, you're hot, so don't do that again. <laughs> there's, a, there's a shortage of perfect breastness, or it'll be a shame to waste yours. <laughs> Did I happen to mention I saw you naked? Yeah. <laughs> I took a look up the old skirt there. Um, Marty gave me a free show. Part of me wishes that, like, she was brought back through supernatural means, because that is, like, it, it is, like, a because that way, like, it is an actual second chance and not just, like, you know, a fluke of nature, I suppose. I mean, it's, like, a weird thing to begin with. It, like, kind of, like, threw me for a loop for the rest of the movie. I was, like, waiting for the turn to happen. But I guess the idea is, like, they're trying to get more people inside this mortuary sure. than there normally would be. And that was, like, one of the interesting ways to do it, I suppose. Because I, I guess this kind of stuff does happen. Yeah. I think it was, I think it was 
pretty great. I mean, I didn't expect that to be a character trait where a suicide victim comes in who isn't really dead and then reconsiders right. their life. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's interesting. It's different. Like, you don't expect Yeah, them. and then it has to reflect on that with another human being. Like, that's really fucking intense as far as, like, a conversation. Well, and, and not even that. You're put right in fucking peril the yeah. second you wake up after you thought you just ended it all. While trying to survive, yeah. Yeah, you don't even have time to really reflect on it properly because you're trying to... F- you, like, you... You just killed yourself, but now you find yourself alive and suddenly have to fight for survival? That's insane. Yeah. Well, that heart-to-heart's broken up because the last fucking ghoul is, comes out of the f- bottom of the elevator and it's like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and they, they close the fucking thing, and uh, they're like, holy shit, man, we gotta get out of here. So they open up the air vent and crawl through the air vent. Now, this particular air vent leads to the room where everybody just happens to be what we were just talking about before where they're like calling through the air vent and and the whole time you're hearing you're hearing gordon like fire this fucking machine gun and also dana scream it's scratch it's scratching my leg it's biting my leg (laughs) you're like all right a little closer just follow my voice just follow my voice these people come through the air vent, not a fucking scratch on them. No. What are we talking about? It's biting at me. It's it's clawing at my leg. Well, where is this thing, by the way? It should be right on their fucking heels. You would think, right? Yeah, it just kind of fucks off. Well, it does come out and gra- it grabs Allie by the shoulder and, like, rips her fucking arm open. Right, yeah. And then fucking Jersey shoots it with a fire extinguisher. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, th- and then they take that moment to try to get to the freight elevator. It's pretty awesome because they, like, block the vent hole with, like, a set of lockers and then they and then they split. Yes, yes. Um, and there's a quick bit right here where Jersey and, and Gordon are talking about uh, how they killed these things. And he's like, yeah, I just shot the shit out of it, and it blew its fucking chest apart. <laughs> and he's like, what? I, I shot it with my gun, and it didn't do anything. And then Allie, fucking book of knowledge that she is, is like, yeah, well, you know, in folklore, the evil's in the heart not the brain or whatever. And they're like, oh, kill the heart, kill the beast. Gotcha. The Tin Man would not do well in this place. Yeah, I like the fact that that it, like, they avoided the zombie trope of, like, destroy the brain by coming up with something entirely different that makes sense for this, for this, for this story. It skirts around all of the tropes. Yeah. Because you can be bitten and, and maimed by these things and not become one of them like they have to initiate you you like you need to eat them <laughs> like consume them in some way yes to, to be turned into one of these things don't worry folks that comes into play soon well yeah because at, at this point phyllis diller is really just like rattling around just fucking foaming at the mouth and no one seems to be concerned about her <laughs> what's well, pooping plus nobody fucking cares no fuck her they go to the freight elevator and fucking marty's there like yucking it up like hey look who i brought in mr chen he's doing his best michael myers because he's got a sheet on his head and he's like, oh, ooga booga. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He tried to scare them. I forgot about that. And everybody's like, what the fuck are you doing, Marty? Everybody's like, fuck you, douchebag. Have you seen, taken a look at us yet? And he's like, what's the big deal? Oh, look who I got. Yeah, they're all ragged. There's blood all over yeah. the place, claw marks on the wall. Shep's femoral artery is probably severed. and He's probably dying. And like Marty's like, ooga booga. They are all so dumbfounded that they can't tell him what's happening. They're like, uh, and Marty's just like, what the hell's wrong with you? Would you, you lose your funny bone or some shit? And then fucking Poopin' Platts oh. turns into this giant fucking monster and smashes this guy into the elevator and he is dead. <laughs> well, because this was clearly the part when Peter Jackson just entered the fucking movie. <laughs> Took the director's fucking uh, job and told him to sit down for a couple minutes. You didn't say what I was going to say, but you're in the same wavelength. I was going to say, she becomes a mishmash of Lionel's mother and Large Marge. Like, she's... Yeah! <laughs> she looks like one of the fucking freaked monsters from Freak. It turns yeah. into a fucking Peter Jackson movie. Or kind of like one of the Scolari brothers, like with the big fucking eyes and the oogie boogie hair. Yeah, yeah. All right, fun fact. this The guy who did the animatronics for this did the animatronics for uh, TMNT 2. Oh. So he did Toka and Razor. <laughs> I, I I can almost see it. I'm thinking back to this, and if you like look like how big Toka and Razor's eyes are, like I, it kind of yeah. like it, it's kind it's kind of there. I can see it, you know. Also, kind of like the 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 I would say like the bony arms, but the very large protruding limbs. 
Um, but yeah, but somewhere in the middle of those two designs is Phyllis Diller. <laughs> I mean, she looks fucking creepy and, and cool. Like, I oh, mean, I, I like I it. I love this fucking... It just comes out of fucking left field like nobody's business. Oh, yeah. Like, she's over there like... <laughs> and, like, no one's fucking caring about it. And then all of a sudden, she just morphs... Into, like, an eight-foot, ten-foot-tall fucking monstrosity. Nobody loves you like your mother. Oh, God, I hate that part. <laughs> Man, she has, and what's hilarious, too, is that she still has Phyllis Diller's laugh, so she's laughing Yeah, as she's attacking these people. It also, it also looks convincingly like Phyllis Diller turned into a giant cool mutant. It's awesome. It's really, it's really, really well done. Her first order of business is to kill Marty with a single punch. <laughs> she, she kills Marty with one punch and turns over and glory kills Shep from Doom Eternal. Like, she bops him in the fucking head and his, his skull just collapses. You think Marty's gonna live right she like punches him into the fucking elevator oh shit is he gonna come back and like he literally his head goes to the side and just blood starts pouring out of his mouth like nope that's it you're like oh he'll get better he slumps over oh so she gives fucking willie the old skull cracker and he's dead oh my god i love that shit so she goes bop and fucking (laughs) well the only other one that takes a serious blow here is jersey he gets royally fucked up but he survives yeah he gets tossed head head first through a fucking window and then ends up in front of the door so they can't get out (laughs) because he's just passed out in front of the fucking door (laughs) right i kind of love that because like there's there's a lot of thought put into little things and like that is an interesting mm-hmm. because if you're panicked you're not going to stop to think like jersey get up out of the fucking door you're like the door is not opening meanwhile this guy's having a fucking minute like barely can move his back's busted he's getting a door slammed into him <laughs> i do have an actual funny real life story from work about something like this so a homeless man fell asleep behind our hospital and my friend amber's reaction to this was to keep opening the door and hitting him in the fucking head <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I was like, Amber, leave the poor man alone. You're killing him. She's like, I don't know why he's there. Yeah, I just keep doing it. <laughs> Maybe he'll move. Maybe he'll go away. So then Dana, what, what does she grab? What What is this sticking out of the fucking ground that she eviscerates uh, poop and plats with? It's like a piece of, like, the electrical panel that, like, got like severed when she initially attacked i think yeah it think of it like i think of it like a giant cattle prod because it's like pvc pipe with like an open-ended like broken electrical source okay yeah. and she stabs phyllis diller through the fucking heart with it yeah because phyllis diller charges her and she kind of pulls this thing down and kind of um like i guess gives her the old ursula um yeah yeah and pales her with yeah. it yeah and yeah. she fed uh, shocked to shit yeah yeah it's awesome <laughs> and then she's dead yeah and so I guess like they're recovering in like they, they kind of gather their shit and they're recovering in their room. Is this where the dog walks up? The f- flusums comes up and fucks fucking eats some of that Kiyoshi shit off the ground. Yeah, like you'd be forgiven for thinking that Phyllis Diller was like the final boss. Uh, guess again. Oh, no. <laughs> now we're going full Resident Evil here. Well, because they kill they kill the last one, don't they? Because I can't remember how they do it. Because I know they have Jersey up on, in one of the beds, and he's like literally bleeding from the mouth. They're like, "We gotta get the fuck out of here." Well, it was great because like Jersey's like, "Come here, Allie, listen." Well, they kill Poop and Plats. The dog eats the shit, and then they're in this other room. <laughs> and Jersey's like, "Come here, I gotta tell you something." <laughs> right. He's like, "I'm sorry, I did this to you." And she's and she like gives this whole epitaph about like it's not your fault and you know I have my problems and blah 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 and then we cut back to Jersey and he's like dying he's, and he's like <laughs> bleeding out of his mouth yeah internal bleeding come here Ali I got some emotion awards for you <laughs> and then she's like pouring her heart out like you know what you were right maybe I was making a tomb for myself but. That's different. You know, I'm, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to fix myself. Meanwhile, he's like passed out, dying, not hearing a word of this. He's like gargling blood. And he's she's like, oh, shit. OK, it's really time to go now. And Gordon is like, oh, wow, he looks worse than I thought. Like, <laughs> <laughs> So they pick up Jersey and uh, Gordon jumps in a fucking forklift and like tries to bust open the the door, the front doors, but they're like barred shut. Right, right. And then the last ghoul finally rears its head. And now what's really creepy about this last face off with this last ghoul is that like it's a fucking puppet for a lot of the time and when this thing is being shook around it's very unsettling the way it looks yeah yeah because he, he basically pierces it with the forklift doesn't he yeah yeah fucking ghoul prime gets it right through the fucking chest and uh cool is, prime. is like stuck to the fucking wall 
And then that's it. They're all the all the children are fucking finally dead, right? That's it. We're getting out of here. And he can't even like like you're saying, Joe. He can't even really break the glass on this window because it's like, if you guys haven't seen the movie at home, it, it's almost like those uh, doors that open automatically when you walk up to them, but they're like kind of like fold into three or four different spots, so they don't have a lot of window room really to go through. Right. And the, the th- problem is, there's like some kind of bars or some kind of security thing in place where like he breaks the glass but can't get through the bars or some shit right can't dislodge it or knock it down so then um you know there's a fucking glass of water on on a table somewhere and you just start seeing ripples go through it (laughs) john hurt put it there you know you know we made the dead alive jokes but like it does kind of like this last section does feel like the third act of dead alive where like lionel's like no not done there's, I haven't seen Mom yet, or or the third act of Demonic Toys. You yeah, know, I, I was pick. gonna say yeah, sure, yeah. Like, like, yeah, the um the 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 wear uh what the fuck was it? Wear bear, wear bear. Yes, um it's I mean it's almost like a palette swap of that. I'll just be honest. <laughs> and they both end up on a fucking roof. So um, but yeah, it's it just this because once the dog eats the shit, you're like oh no, and like it is very in Dead Alive once um once Lyle's mom's coffin starts to fucking shake. Um, and then you don't see her for a while. It kind of feels the same way here because once the dog eats the goop and runs away, you're like, "Oh no, what the fuck is gonna happen with that?" <laughs> and they don't disappoint. No. So the fucking ground starts shaking. They're like, "What the fuck is that?" And this giant poodle werewolf monster comes <laughs> barreling through these two fucking doors. It has a bow. <laughs> it has a bow in its hair. I love this scene because. Everybody's standing in shock, and then Dana just does that, like, horrified laugh. Yeah. <laughs> where, where she's just like, I can't believe this is happening, and then just gets scared. Well, yeah, because it's a ridiculous-looking poodle that wants to rip your fucking throat out. Oh, yeah, it's... <laughs> and it's and it's French cut, so, like, yeah. <laughs> Oops. Oops. <laughs> yeah, like a French poodle with biceps. Like, it's ridiculous. Oh, my God, you think he, you think this does the oops thing, too? It's like oops robot? Oh, no. It I might. I fucking hope not. Reaches down for a milk bone. I don't want to look up that thing's skirt. It's a, it, it drops a milk bone. Oops. <laughs> Oops. So they, they go into another room to escape this thing, and they're debating what to do. And essentially, this, it starts breaking down the fucking door, and they're like, all right, we're going to take this you know, unknown ladder to somewhere. To the roof. <laughs> it goes all the way up. I guess to the roof, yeah. And it looks like it hasn't been used like in 50 years. It has fucking cobwebs on it and shit. Mm-hmm. It's like some kind of emergency thing but it's also like an air shaft at the same time but it also looks like they were just like anybody over 120 pounds is not gonna fit through this (laughs) hole (laughs) oh man everybody gets through this fucking roof gets to the roof and Allie's climbing up this thing and she fucking winnie the poos right through this fucking like little segment where like you have to crawl through on the ladder because she's too fucking big to get through it. I can't, I can't believe they used her like her size as a plot device. Like, but it's, it it makes it more intense, really, because that thing's like clawing at her heels. Well, it does, yeah. It does make it more intense because like it's not unbelievable. Um, and it doesn't feel contrived either. Like she's a fucking big woman, and that's a small space. And also, like, I also feel bad because it's like, oh my god, fucking climb, like. <laughs> It may not be a fair comparison, but I had flashbacks to March of the Wooden Soldiers when fucking Ollie's trying to squeeze through that hole <laughs> by the boogeyman and Stan yes. sticks his fucking arm through and pulls him through. Yes. Man, yes. I, I haven't seen that movie in a minute. Now I really want to go watch it. <laughs> um, but also another important part that uh, happens here when Gordon's climbing up because Ali kind of is the last one to go up. He drops his lucky rabbit keys and she's like, oh, I'll bring them up to you. So she puts them in her pocket. And as she's trying to squeeze through this thing, uh, Flusums is coming through the fucking door, and it, like, whacks this gas pipe? Yeah, which I thought for a hot second she was just going to sacrifice herself right then and there and just, you know, light the thing and call it a day, but she she fights on. Yeah, she has her fucking Vasquez Gorman moment, and fucking, <laughs> she's like, all right, guys, you're going to go, and I'm going to stop this fucking demon poodle monster. So she lights the fucking Lucky Rabbit's foot, and... And it, like, catches the gas on fire. Or, no, she burns, like, a fu- a fucking cloth, a piece of cloth. Yeah. And it, like, falls down on the ground and ignites the fucking gas. And shoots this huge fireball out of the fucking smokestack. And um, she's not dead, somehow. Right, she, like, jumped off to, like, one of the side uh, utility yeah. fucking tunnels or whatever you want to call it. I thought it. it was a dog's leash that got, like, somehow hung up that she lit. 
and it went down to like yeah like uh went down to the dog and you know blew everything up yeah it was some kind of it was some kind of piece of cloth whether if it was i think it was like one of the dressing like on her it was part of her bandage yeah the dressing oh, on her okay. arm from when she got cut up earlier she she used it as a uh yeah she burned it to like get the dog off but in doing so the burning piece fell and then like lit the gas on fire yeah it's kind of awesome honestly but she but after this all happened she kind of yells up to everybody else who's on the roof now like all right, you know, get out of here. Get Jersey to a hospital. He's like, and she's just like, uh, I'm good. I'm just going to have to hang out for a few minutes and catch my breath. So they, they all run off. And then yeah. she hears from behind her the fucking thing growling. And she's like, oh, fuck. And she starts scurrying in this tunnel away from it. And I guess just wherever she ends up is back above the evidence room. And I guess just her weight, she falls through the fucking ceiling and crashes to the floor. And it looks so painful. It, yeah. Because well, it's like, it's one shot of this woman coming down from the fucking ceiling, and you're looking at it from the from the floor, essentially. So, like, you see the the ceiling collapse underneath her, and you watch her eat shit. Oh, yeah. It's kind of awesome. Like, she becomes John fucking McClain. <laughs> <laughs> Allie McClain? Yeah. She's, she's more like Daniel Baldwin, though. Yeah, well, I mean, I like her better. Um, <laughs> uh, there's this awesome scene... Um, where it's like da- this downlit scene of uh, this tunnel, and the fucking dog like puts its hands out and then like pulls its head out of the fucking tunnel. I don't know. It looks really cool. It's creepy. Well, anyway. Well, that that shot of her realizing what's happening is great because she's just sitting there and she's like trying to catch her breath. And there's no music, and then you hear like the growl, and she like she opens her eyes and looks over and like kind of does that thing where like like almost like an Arnold thing from Predator where he's like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Yeah. Um, uh, it's just awesome. I, again, Allie's like, this actress is the most unexpected action star you could think of, and here she is falling out of air vents and, and blowing shit up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and she's not even done blowing shit up. <laughs> no, she happens to fall on the fucking pipe bombs in the evidence room. Yeah, and just pockets them. Yeah, she starts tying them to the door that she couldn't get out of. Uh, that they couldn't leave from, so I guess her plan is to blow that fucking door open. But fucking... The dog comes over and fucking bitch slaps her into a fucking uh, a shelf, and she ends up uh, taking the pipe bomb and like lighting it, and then playing fetch with the dog and like throws it through the air, and the dog catches it in its fucking mouth. Because it's still a dumb fucking dog. Because <laughs> it's still a dumb dog. <laughs> this fucking this pipe bomb like makes this like like pop sound and the dog goes huh and then just fucking explodes <laughs> well they show the shot from outside you know the outside of the building and the whole front of the fucking door flies off and a big explosion flies out of the fucking building here's the thing are we are we sure this is a pipe bomb or is this a stick of dynamite because like pipe bombs are supposed to spray shit like everywhere and like hit people with trap no one like debris and this causes right. a fucking fireball okay <laughs> this thing blows out the front of this building yeah there is no way that she is alive. <laughs> no. Yeah, zero. But here she comes. Here she comes like the fucking Terminator out of this fucking thing, out of this building. It's all on fire and shit. And she's like, yeah, I just got a couple scratches on me. I found a refrigerator to crawl into. <laughs> Imagine if she walked out of it screaming like Sam Worthington from Salvation. Yeah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. She's born again, pretty much. So everybody comes over and rejoices. They're like, oh, my God, you made it. That's great. And then cue this, like, Van Hagar ripoff of, like, what dreams are made of song. What is this fucking music that this movie ends with? Well, they all found love because they had that kind of weird (laughs) sexual tension between fucking Gordon and Dana. And there was kind of like this unsaid thing between Jersey and Allie, I guess? I thought she was com- I thought she was coming on to fucking Shep, dude. I thought they were going to fucking go pound for pound, but I yeah, guess not. Yeah, me too, at first, until he, you know, until he croaked. Until, yeah, yeah, until he got his head smashed into his shoulders. He whispered into her ears before he died, My bong's over there. <laughs> Give it a new home. Smoke this doobie for me. What is what's the fucking song? It's like it's like oh I got a brave heart yeah. I mean maybe not, but it might as well be. It it's it sounds like it it sounds like every rip off of like uh what the fuck um what is that stupid sister Christian song? Like I can't remember the fuck the name of that god awful song is though. Oh motoring. Yes, it sounds like a bad knockoff of that. It sounds like a really shitty. I mean I don't like Van Hagar at all. Like the Van Halen with Sammy Hagar. Yeah. But it sounds like a fucking Van Hagar 
ripoff song. Yeah. It's really it's, fucking it is, bad. It is Dime Store 80s glam rock power ballad, and it's hysterical because it comes out of fucking nowhere. It's very much yeah. like at the end of Death Note when that music starts playing, you're like, what is this? Like, you're like what happened? <laughs> what is? What are you doing here? Like, I get it because you want to like do it on an upbeat note or whatever, but it's just like, huh. And that's a thing. And then credits. Yeah, and everybody, everybody's nuzzling each other's heads as this, as the uh, credits start playing, and then the movie ends. And then apparently there was another scene that was cut of Gordon and Dana getting married, which was also apparently the first thing they ever filmed. Are you serious? According to IMDb, our good friend. Wait, so they were gonna have like, and now they're here. Like this is yeah, what happened. Oh I, my god. I guess. Thank God they cut that because that's stupid. Yeah. That's a little. Oh, that's a little much. Like they. Like I. I don't buy that they really know each other yet. Don't just jump to them getting married. <laughs> no. No, same. I, You know, the other scene that was kind of unbelievable to me that they cut was Allie when she goes home to the fucking mansion, tired, beat up, covered in dust, and Gunner says, uh, <laughs> so uh, when you get a... <laughs> When 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 are you gonna make a sandwich there, Allie? <laughs> Those fucking chicken wings aren't gonna cook themselves. She just fucking swings and backhands him in the mouth, and he's like, "All right, all right, all right, I'll do it myself." <laughs> all right, I'll be sexist over here. <laughs> I'll be sexist. Puts on the Chicago Bears coat, goes in the other room, sits down, stews. I'll be sexist to Dobby. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, he takes it on the on the house elf. <laughs> yeah, he goes over to Dobby, and he's just sexist to him. <laughs> <laughs> Dobby doesn't want to. Have any relations with you now, Mr. Gunner? Toby is genderless. <laughs> God, imagine Gunner or or Haggerty or any one of them take your pick, fucking kill Dobby, and then she's got to do the case. She's got to get like one of his socks or something and fucking find out. <laughs> she holds the sock and she finds out that Charnetsky and Haggerty have been torturing this fucking thing. She's like, "You rotten motherfuckers!" And, and Gunner, Gunner, Gunner's all verbal. He doesn't actually mean anything. He's just kind of a dickhead. He doesn't yeah. actually do anything he's just all talk no you know Haggerty and Chernitsky though I'd watch out for them she just has visions of them like burning his ears oh no you goddamn Nazi <laughs> Haggerty's like punching him Dobby is Dobby is genderless and certainly not a Nazi what's a Nazi sir shut up go make me some food I just want to suck <laughs> you know, honestly, I could see Allie and Haggerty just sitting there at that kitchen table, just smoking cigarettes oh, and yeah. talking all day, and it's just kind of, uh, it kind of fits. So what'd you do today? You, you looks like you had a, a rough night. Hey, you look like shit. What happened? She's like, I fought a giant poodle. I don't want to talk about it. He's like, all right, all right, all right. He puts a cigarette out. <laughs> Sit down. I just smoked seven packs of cigarettes, but I'm ready for my next one. I got to keep that smoke cloud going. John Hurt could be around any corner. <laughs> got to keep that fog up. Put the coffee on. We're staying. We're pulling an all-nighter. Allie's just shaking her head in her bedrobe like... Why do you guys do this? Why? You, what? What is it all for? I'm going back to my pile of trash. <laughs> just throws the covers over her head. But it's just like 19 coats that are sewn together. It's just like... <laughs> <laughs> I used to wear these. Oh, man. It's like old t-shirts that you make into a blanket? Yeah. Okay. But it's but it's coats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so where are we putting this, guys? Uh, shelf. My God, this is fun. Um, I was, like... It's always a delight for me in this show when, like, when, like, it's mainly Joe. Uh, actually, every time Sean brings forward a Daniel Baldwin movie, I'm like, fuck yes! <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> it must be done. But, like, every time there's there's something, like, I've just never fucking heard of, and I didn't do much research on it because there's not much to research. Um, so, especially when we go into something like this blind, and I come out of it like, wow, I'm angry I didn't discover this earlier in life. Um, yeah, this movie's fantastic. Um, it's a little, you know, little corny. It's got some goofy comedy, but some of the comedy really lands. And as we've said enough times, uh, the, the, the drama in this movie is thick. Um, and it's well thought out. Um, and everything feels very grounded and relatable. And none of these people feel fake or, you know, out of reach of your imagination. Everyone looks very homely and normal and tired and beat up and out of shape or, you know, just regular. They just look like regular-ass people, and those are my favorite things about this movie. Um, and then compounded with that are some of the most horrific little uh, ghoul monsters I've seen in a, in a horror movie from this era. Uh, it's really fun, um, and uh, the ending is really awesome. So, yeah, shelf, totally, 100%. Uh, definitely shelf for me. Um, again, I mean, again, this is one of those films that's been on the shelf <laughs> for years. Um. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Connor really just sang my life with his words <laughs> <laughs> with that. So, he's saying how how I feel about this. Sometime, times. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, big part of that um 
it feeling regular, right? Uh, are these these people feeling regular or relatable? It's very easy to insert yourself into this film and be like, I would totally do that, or or um, that makes that makes sense, right? It's it, you never feel you never feel like you're watching a bunch of people who don't um who don't belong there i guess rather it's not like it's not like joe action star i guess you know what i mean yeah like like you do have your comedy relief but she's like what 70 (laughs) you know what i mean yeah exactly um so you have like a bunch of old people a bunch of uh out of shape people and like two young kids um and it really makes for a good cocktail uh, of people to kind of get stuck with each other and, and, and makes it very interesting. I really love all of uh, everybody's backstories because it's all fleshed out where it really doesn't have to be, you know, uh, for this type of film. And they take their time and they and they, and they do flesh it out. And um, and I think it works to the film's benefit because we the hardest thing about these films is to give a shit about these characters. Right. When you watch a horror movie. Um, to get invested in those characters is sometimes a chore, but I feel like this pulls it off really nicely. Um, like, I feel like Allie could be like my aunt, right? Or, or something like that. Okay. It's creepy because Allie does look like my aunt, the one who just passed away recently. So it was a little jarring at first. I was like, Oh God, Aunt 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 Mary Teresa. Oh geez. But yeah. And then you couple that with like really good filmmaking like really good cinematography um i mean is it is it like citizen kane or is it like you know for lack of a better term like avatar or some visually stunning fucking thing no it's just shot in a way that's very pleasing um and each scene does its own thing like we were saying like if there's a comedy scene it's shot properly for the comedy if there's a horror scene it's just shot really really well for that horror for that tone right uh the lighting is really good they do a lot of class those classic like um tricks uh i don't even know what the fuck you'd call that um i used to know the word i'm having i'm drawing a blank right now but like the 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 um the the uh uh blinds look or like the 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 the, sh- the stripe of light look and everything there's like fall off on either side kind of like morticia adams's eyes when they show that sometimes you know what i mean yeah how they keep the light on it all the time yeah where it's just like a strip of light and and it's it's really good man i sound like an idiot anyway um it, it good i like it good i like stuffs and then the and then the effects man i mean these kids are fucking terrifying looking and uh wonderful and i think i i think these are they're not necessarily zombies but they're my favorite zombified and or mummified and or demon uh monsters uh and plus there's an extra creep factor cuz they're they're children right and just like the way they're shot and the way they they carry themselves uh are is really unnerving and i love it and it's very effective and yeah, this movie's just a blast. It's funny, it's scary, um, and it hits all the notes that I that I want to see in a film like this. And uh, and yeah, I love it. Shelf. Well, I'm going to be that storm cloud raining on a fucking sunny day here because I hated this movie. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> You're a liar. I thought this movie was a piece of shit. I'm not gonna lie. I thought. Are you serious? I'm. I'm a hundred percent serious. I thought. I thought the effects were really good, and I liked the uh, main actress that played Allie. But the rest of the movie, I was bored to tears. Oh my goodness! I. Uh, I felt like the first forty-five minutes dragged so fucking bad. I was like waiting, begging for something to happen, and when it did, I was like, "Okay, this is this is really good. I'm into this." But for me, I don't know. Uh, it just it didn't click for me. I, I I couldn't really buy into the story. The acting was just like I, I said that earlier, and I know maybe it doesn't bother you guys as much, but it was like so bad that it just took me out of the movie repeatedly. And like I listened to this movie with headphones, which maybe might have been a mistake on my part, but the mixing of this film is pretty poor in some spots. There's a lot of uh, music playing without any sound effects. And, you know, I don't even really hold that against the movie. This is like a low-budget, early 90s film. I just... It, it was definitely just another thing that jumped out at me while watching it. Sure, there's def- 
there's definitely some spots. It's funny because I did notice that too because I have a note that says the sound mixing in this movie is utter chaos. Yeah, especially towards the beginning there. There's some... I mean, I, I don't hold that against them as much. It was just one more little thing sure. to the list. And listen, I don't... I say I hate this movie and I'm over-exaggerating a little bit. You know, it's not House of the Dead or Pluto Nash. But it's definitely for me like mid-dumpster. Probably, <laughs> probably not going to watch it again. Um, but I, like I just said, you know, like I, everything you guys were saying, I get it. I totally get it. But, uh, for me, I don't know. It's just, uh, this one wasn't for me. I wasn't feeling the boneyard. You know, Connor, you make that, uh, that flash reference earlier about, you know, the cocktail that, that hit, uh, Barry Allen to create the flash. And there was that incident in flashpoint where he didn't get transformed. Uh, I think you two, you got the transformation, and I was that hump of, <laughs> that lump of shit on the ground that just got electrocuted. It, it just, it didn't piece together for me. The comedy parts and the horror parts, kind of just the way that they, they were, they were, you know, put together in the end. Just, uh, I wasn't feeling this one. You, you were the, you were the slam cut to Barry in a full body cast, just covered in burns. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um. I probably would recommend this movie to people that like this uh, this genre. Like, it's not something I would say, yo, stay the fuck away from it. But I'd probably have that caveat that's like, I wasn't that into it. Right. Well, what what would you consider it? Comedy horror? I guess, yeah. Comedy horror. I mean, especially towards the end there, once you start getting, like, the real Peter Jackson style mom. I mean, that's right. what I think of Peter Jackson. Sure. I could be, like, wrong on that. Um, but that's what I think of Dead Alive. I mean, if that's the way it makes you feel, yeah. Well, meet the, and meet the Feebles a little bit, like those style of puppets. Um, I don't know, just the tonal shifts in the film, just it really threw me for a loop. I mean, maybe I'll watch it again in a year, maybe I'll eat my words, maybe I'll come back to this film, but right now it's st- it's in the middle of the dumpster, in the fucking boneyard, next to all the chicken bones and turkey <laughs> bones. <laughs> And uh, rat bones, honestly. You know, if I don't see it in the background of this Undertaker Rage of Styles match, I'm definitely giving you a call because that's where it should be, apparently. I mean, honestly, <laughs> the Undertaker's going to probably tombstone pile drive AJ Styles into the dumpster and leave his body next to the chicken bones and other bones that I just talked about and this movie. And then pose in front of no crowd. Um, oh, no, no, no. Body by Jake will be in the corner chanting because this, remember, this is kind of a Thanksgiving movie. <laughs> That's right. I was yeah. going to say, this is what it was like when Random Fire happened. You two were like, love this movie. And I was like, I fucking hate it. <laughs> it happens sometimes. I'm really taken aback right now that um, that you didn't like it. Hey, I can't like everything. No, you can't like it. No, I, 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 like, I like the perspective that you're offering. I just... I didn't expect it. That's all. The the thing is, though, here's the funny thing. Like, cause I kind of watched this twice over a few days. The first time through, I was like, I don't think I like this too much. And then, like, the second time through, I was like, ah, right, I kind of see what you're doing here. <laughs> and you also didn't know exactly what was happening. Yeah, exactly. Until yeah. We talked exactly. about it. It's just lo- hilarious. I lost the plot between two viewings. I was like, I don't know what's happening, but it sure is keeping my attention, and I'm enjoying it. So that's it. That's the Boneyard from 1991, directed by James Cummins. Hey, everybody, if you want some more bad movie goodness, you can check us out at moviedumpsterpodcast.com. Subscribe to us anywhere you listen to your podcast, and make sure to leave us a five-star review if you dig the show, because it helps us get out of the bottom of the dumpster and into more eardrums. Yeah, and if you're on the social medias, you can follow us at Movie Dumpster on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor Dem Bones, Dem Bones, McGraw. Dem Dry Bones, sir. Dem Dry Bones. Thanks for visiting the dumpster. Okay, what about her? She is with me. Oh. Driver's license? Poor dad, didn't we?